morning, everyone. Court will call State of Wisconsin versus Daryl E. Brooks, case number 21 CF 1848. May I have the appearances, please? Yes, good morning, Judge Sue Apple, Leslie Basie, and Zach Wichow appearing for the State of Wisconsin. Good morning, sir. Please state your name for the record. I'm here as a third party intervener in that matter appearing as authorized representative for my client. I accept for value and return for value all of the charging instruments in this matter and make my exemption available for discharge of all obligations and charges connected with this case. I do not dispute any of the facts in these charging instruments and I do not consent to or agree to being called their name. Is your name? Brooks. To this court as Daryl Brooks. Uh, is appearing in person in custody. He is also in civilian or street clothing in a suit and tie, also wearing a mask. Mr. Brooks, I know today you're also not wearing headsets. I just want to make a record yesterday. Um, they were offered to you, uh, even charged. Uh, the different charging unit was um, provided. I did not see you wearing the uh, headset at any point in time. Um, and from my perspective, given your um, either legal arguments made, comments to the court, or questioning of witnesses uh, that you were able to hear. Um, but I just feel it important, given that you raised that issue, uh, to put that on the record. I do want to address uh, the case law that was filed by Mr. Brooks. Um, I have a question, sir, because you had indicated there was this United States v. Lopez. I had looked up a case. I don't know if it's the one that you were referring to. I asked you if it was from 1995, you thought it was. Have you been able to look through your documents to tell me which United States versus Lopez you were referring? Um, I have not, but I also uh, cited Hagen's versus Levine as well, 415 US 533, or I think you may have I was that. able to find Hagen's versus Levine and uh, Malo versus United States. Um, I also found um, a case that is uh, captioned uh, United States versus Lopez. It was decided in 1995. It had to do with the um, jurisdiction. No one had to do with uh, a provision in the federal statutes regarding the gun safe free zone and whether that was constitutional or not. Um, it was a criminal case, but nonetheless, that was one of the major issues in that case. So I don't know if that's the case you were referring or not. Um, and without a citation, it's hard for me to know. <laughs> so that's why I'm asking you if you have any other information about that case. Um, I can possibly look on a break, um, but my understanding uh, of that particular case was um, dealing with the specifics of uh, subject matter and personal jurisdiction, which is why um, it was brought up for the record, which is something that I have been doing adamantly is asking for the court to provide verified proof of jurisdiction, which I have not been provided with as of yet. The court's not required to do that, sir. I understand what your objection is. It's been noted for the record multiple times and the previous rulings of the court stand. I see no reason to revisit those issues or what we call legally um, a motion for reconsideration. Even if I were to take your reference to these cases as a request to reconsider based on a new legal argument, um, the cases that I reviewed um, don't support that. Um, I do want to give the state an opportunity to at least make a record uh, as to their position, and then I'll give you the last word if you want to um, make uh, a legal argument to the contrary. I do. All right, so go ahead. I believe, Attorney Basie, you were going to do that. I, I was. Um, Your Honor, I did review the U.S. versus Lopez, the um, Lopez case that you cited at 514 U.S. 549. As the court already indicated, it deals with the Gun-Free School Zone Act, which is a federal offense. The court found that the that Congress exceeded um, its authority under the Commerce Clause, and therefore um, there was no jurisdiction. I don't find any analogy between that case and this case. Again, I'm not sure if that is the Lopez case that the defendant was referring to. 
With regard to Malo versus United States, this was a, a case involving an accident um, that the plaintiff had with the um, an employee of the U.S. Postal Service who was driving a U.S. Postal truck, and the issue became whether or not there was a valid claim against the uh, U.S. Postal Service um, as a result of a claim filed against the employee, um, and the court held that there was not, and therefore jurisdiction was not conferred um, to the United States. Um, again, not a case that is on point with any issue that's been raised in this case. And finally, Hagen's versus Levine at 415 U.S. 533. Again, this is one in which the um, district court was found to have had jurisdiction to hear the plaintiff's claim. It was a case in which um, a New York, uh, state of New York uh, regulation addressed New York's ability to recoup some payments from AFDC, I believe. And uh, there was a claim that that violated the Equal Protection Clause of the 14th Amendment. Uh, the court did find that the district court did have jurisdiction to hear the plaintiff's claim. Again, I did not find any verbiage from any of these three cases that would um, raise any, any type of argument in this case that this court does not have jurisdiction to hear this case. Thank you. Mr. Brooks, your response? Yeah, I, I respectfully object to that. Um, it's, it's clear in, in both of those cases that ultimately those cases were called correct by the Supreme Court in that both cases ended up being voided because there was no jurisdiction. Um, same thing in this case, how, I, how it applies is this court has yet to prove that it has jurisdiction. It has, it has not been proven. There's been uh, no certified document paperwork um, there's been no proof there's been no response to the uh, demand for the statement of particulars there's been um, no response to uh, I mean we haven't even established that the plaintiff is a living human being and not an entity um, there's so many things that have yet to even be proven and again if both cases that were just cited were voided by the Supreme Court for lack of jurisdiction, how is this case any different? Thank you for your argument, sir. First of all, the Hagen's and the Milo decisions, or Melo, um, these were civil lawsuits. They weren't criminal cases at all. They dealt with the issue of uh, a federal question or federal claims and jurisdiction in the district court for those particular uh, cases. Um, there's nothing that's applicable to a criminal case in state court uh, for this court to even find they're relevant. Uh, they may be case law, maybe law as it relates to that, but they're not relevant to the proceedings in this case. Um, in the Malo decision, for example, that had to do with a lack of jurisdiction because the plaintiff had failed to exhaust administrative remedies. That's not something that's applicable here. And so in that case, the court did not have jurisdiction. Um, in the Hagen's case, again, it had to do with a federal claim and jurisdiction related to that uh, and not criminal charges brought by a state uh, against a individual. The Lopez decision, while a criminal case dealt with a federal law and whether the district court had jurisdiction. In Lopez, the U.S. Supreme Court struck down a federal statute that had made an offense criminal, and because of that, there was no jurisdiction. There have been no similar arguments made in this case at all. The arguments that you raise related to the Bill of Particulars, related to um, uh, those types of issues, um, have all been debunked throughout the ages in the courts of the United States of America, both in state court and in federal court. And I direct your attention once again to United States versus Benneby, 654 F3rd 753. It's a 2011 decision uh, from the Seventh Circuit uh, that is very on point. Um, as to the arguments that you are raising. So there's no requirement for this court to do what you are asking or demanding it to do. Uh, and for 
all of those reasons, this court will deny your request to dismiss, uh, deny your request for uh, the demand for particulars, um, even going back to one of the filings from the third, dealing with your demand for a verified statement, your notice of special appearance. I mean, all of those things have been noted on the record, uh, but to the extent that the court needs to respond to any of those, once again, uh, your demands and requests and objections are either overruled or denied as the case may be. Your Honor, may I respectfully request a legal reconsideration for your ruling? No, I just went through my reasoning, sir. So without uh, you meeting the standard under uh, a motion for reconsideration under section 806.07 uh, that request is summarily denied without any further argument all right with for record, that for the record may i request a legal or factual basis for your ruling as you just cited your honor i just uh, provided the legal ba basis sir you just cited a, a a case law from united states versus Benebe, correct um, my reasoning stands the record before you and on the record speaks for itself. I'm not going to address this any further. Your objections are noted. Respectfully, Your Honor, may, may I ask for a written judicial finding of facts and conclusion of law in this matter? You may request that request is denied. For the record, may I respectfully move for an interlocutory declaratory appeal on this matter, Your Honor? Uh, that is not an issue this court would address. That would be for an appellate court, sir. For the record, may I move to stay these proceedings until this instant matter is adjudicated by a court of competent jurisdiction? Um, that request is denied. This is a court of competent jurisdiction. Based on we'll what? Proceed. Based on what law or fact, Your Honor? All right, Mr. Brooks, your objections are noted. I want to keep moving forward today. May I respectfully, may I respectfully object to that, Your Honor, based on the fact that you cited something that was a federal law and then the cases that you went over in the challenge of jurisdiction were all dealing with federal guidelines this court's not going to explain the law to you sir um, oh i've God. cited the law um, but i just direct you to those decisions i believe they speak for themselves and um, your request for any further articulation by this court as to the basis for the court's decision is denied May I, may I respectfully object, Your Honor, and, and still ask for a verified proof of... Mr. Brooks, I've already addressed that the request is denied. All right, moving on, uh, can the state... I'm moving object. on, Mr. Brooks. Thank you. Your objections are noted. Um, Attorney Opper, I'd like to address the Definitely issue... Object, Your Honor. Your objections noted. Um, I would like to address the issue of the subpoenas that were turned over to the state. If you could just make a record on that. Yes, thank you. We have received the subpoenas that were uh, provided by Mr. Brooks. I believe there were 12 in total. Uh, we are endeavoring to have uh, all the individuals properly served, and we will um, assist in arranging their appearance here in the courtroom at the appropriate time, with the exception of that one individual who we believe has relocated to the state of Texas. Um, there are no other concerns that the state has at this point in getting those subpoenas served and getting these uh, people here. I do want to uh, advise the court that one of the witnesses on Mr. Brooks' uh, subpoena list does need a Spanish interpreter. And that also reminds me to update the court on our progress in that regard. Um, the for the state's case, we believe if we would need a Spanish interpreter and it's still unknown to us, or uncertain, I should say, uh, it'd be later tomorrow morning, like probably after the morning break or even after lunch. We could call these witnesses out of order if we had to. So if you want to just say possibly 1 p.m. tomorrow, we could certainly work around that. Um, and then when we get to Mr. Brooks' case, one of his witnesses will need an interpreter as well. We'll try and help the court uh, keep track of that as well. Um, can you tell me the name of the uh, witness for Mr. Brooks that needs an interpreter? Juan Marquez. And this, can you just give me a little bit more background? What I'm contemplating is because I need to make arrangements for the interpreter is perhaps we could have that person brought the same time the other witness needs an interpreter and do those witnesses 
depending on how long they take it may or may not be back to back but maybe there'd be a witness in between um, just for court efficiency and uh, to make sure we have an interpreter available yes I understand and we could potentially call him out of order he is in the group with the same group that we would need Spanish interpreters for that would be the Catholic community of Waukesha so we're projecting to get to that testimony tomorrow morning for our case all right thank you I'm contemplating uh, Mr. Brooks that uh, since the witness you want as part of that group and there's a possibility that uh, they will need an interpreter um, if that's the situation then I'm going to require that Mr. Marquez be produced at that point for questioning you'll be questioning him first since it would be your witness but uh, I want to make use of wise use of our resource as it relates to the interpreter um, it can be challenging to schedule interpreters especially on a last minute basis all right mr brooks any questions about what i've advised you about the interpreter does that change your decision at all to call the witness um it doesn't change uh me wanting to call the witness and i want to state for the record that i object to being called their name i'm a living and breathing human being what is your name um, I do have questions though. Um, you're well aware that once we went off the record yesterday, I stayed to complete um, all of the uh, subpoenas. I'm aware there, of that. there were there were initially thirteen, and I believe I turned in twelve because the prosecution stated that maybe one of them had relocated but there was just a little bit more clarification that i didn't have yesterday about that whole situation if they relocated or how that would play into them being subpoenaed um so is there a question as it relates to that or just you're well, making that record i'm making that record and also i, I wasn't sure yesterday and maybe I should have asked before we went off the record, should I have just turned in all 13 subpoenas that I had and then just wait to see what would have, what more information could have been learned from that? You can certainly give them the 13th subpoena and we can make a further record later if need be and we'll go from there. I mean, obviously as officers of the court, they're telling me that they have this information um, about a witness being out of state. There's a, a different procedure for obtaining a witness that is from out of state, including um, that the person calling that witness needs to make the travel arrangements, and that's in the uh, rules of procedure. So, uh, but it's up to you if you want to turn that one over uh, so that it's officially one that you turned over, given that we, you had been given that information and then the subpoenas needed to be refilled or filled out again. Um, I'm certainly uh, willing to have that turned over to them and at a later point, a further record can be made if needed. Um, if in the event that that takes place, would it be the same procedure, me having to stay after, or how would it work from that point? Because I, I would essentially say it would make more sense to just fill them out all together and file them together so everything is just together. It and makes it easier. Just the one? Just the one? Yes. Do you need another form? Um, I have another form. All right. Do you have a copy of the first time you filled it out so you have some of that information readily at your fingertips? I, I believe I do. Um, I don't I don't want to say I'm 100% sure. I would have to do some minimal looking through all the paperwork. If not, I have the first batch of subpoenas on my table in my chambers, and I, I can bring that out. I'm pretty sure it's if it's not in the paperwork that's in front of me, it's in one of these boxes, which, as you see, is... A lot of paperwork um, I'm, I'm positive that is there I would just have to well let me know on a break like I said I have it readily available and certainly can give it back to you to look at all right uh, what about the um, did you hear me advise you about the interpreter and making arrangements and per potentially calling your witness out of order because of that uh, yeah I think I think that was pretty clear okay good just want you to be prepared for the possibility that tomorrow you may need to call that witness or the witness will be made available and you may need to question that witness tomorrow so i just want you to be prepared for that so that should be the first witness call 
It would be out of order. It would still be during the state's case in chief, but if, if we have the interpreter here um, because they need it, because they're not clear yet if they need that interpreter or not, if they use the interpreter and the interpreter's here, um, and then I'm gonna also ask that they make arrangements to have Mr. Marquez available so that the interpreter, um, we can wisely use the interpreter res uh, resource and call those individuals, if not back to back, um, uh, within short order of one another. Sometimes we have to give the interpreter a break and a rest. So that's why it might not be back to back, but in any event, you should be prepared potentially to question that witness. If they don't call the interpreter and the interpreter's not here and we haven't made arrangements, then I'm gonna work with my staff and the clerk's office to make sure uh, we have an interpreter during your uh, case, you'll just need to tell me where in the 12 you want to call that person so I can better schedule. In the 13. Well, you have 13, but one's an out-of-state, so I'm told, but all right. Very good. Anything else from the state, then? No, well, that was it for today, Your Honor. All right, Mr. Brooks, anything other than what we've already talked about? Yeah, um, I don't know if the uh, clerk received uh, two ICF forms that I submitted. I don't know if anything i can check my electronic uh, inbox let me just do that real quick and see if there's anything there well one one of the icfs we just addressed that would be the one that i filled out last night coming back from the proceedings yesterday we just addressed that that was dealing with the subpoenas okay all right i don't see it um, I'll make sure uh, that my staff knows to look for it, and when we get it, it'll be uploaded, and then we can address it at, uh, at a break. The other one was dealing with uh, asking for uh, my my court docket sheet. What do you mean by that, sir? Uh, I would like a certified copy of, the, of my court docket sheet. I need to know what you mean by that, sir. There's many documents in the record. Um, there are docket entries that are part of the electronic file um is the is the entire uh every every uh pr court proceeding is that part of the uh electronic file what did you just you say a recording of the proceedings no 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 i want the actual docket sheet from every court proceeding that i've had in dealing with this matter well you'll have to address that to the clerk of court I did. I, okay, I so then that's why it didn't come to me and I wouldn't seen it. I'm not the custodian of the, the record. It's the clerk of court under the statute. So was um, it received? I don't know, but I can find out. Um, and on a break, we can advise. I'll direct Teresa to find out from the clerk of court if she received that. But she'll respond in due course. It was, it was addressed to uh, Miss Monica Paz. Okay, that's our clerk of court. So that's good that you did that. All right, anything else then? other than what we've already talked about. No. No. Okay, very well. State uh, will have its next witness then when we bring the jury out. Yes. Okay, very well. Have, a quick, please have the jury brought out. Thank you everyone. Please be seated and good morning, ladies and gentlemen. All right, the state may call its next witness. Thank you. The state calls Kelly Grabo. Good morning, Ms. Grabo. If you would please make your way to the witness stand. When you get there, please remain standing and raise your right hand. And there is nothing about the truth, so help you, God. Yes, I do. Thank you. Please be seated. First thing I will have you do is to state your first and last names for the record and spell each. My first name is Kelly, K E L L Y, last name Grabo, G R A B O W. Thank you. Go ahead, your witness. I want to ask you about Sunday afternoon, November 21st of 2021, okay? Okay. Did you? Take part in the Waukesha Christmas Parade that day? Yes. Were you a spectator or a participant? How, why were you there? Um, I was walking with Burris Logistics, my daughter and I. What's your daughter's name? Adelia. And her last name? Mafioli. How long is Adelia? Excuse me, how old is Adelia? Um, she's 10 now. She was 9 at the time. Okay. She was walking with you with Burris Logistics? Yes. Do you remember where your group was positioned in the parade in terms of who was behind you and who was in front of you? Yes, we were directly between the Waukesha Blazers and Waukesha South Marching Band. Okay, so which of those two were behind you? Uh, Waukesha South Band was behind us. Gotcha. Um, what were you wearing that day? 
Um, well, my daughter was dressed up as Cindy Lou Who, and I was wearing my elf dress with candy cane leggings. Did the parade go smoothly? No. Why not? We were struck by a vehicle. Can you describe how that happened for us? Um, while we're walking through, my daughter came walking over by me and she went to go get more candy to go hand out to the kids. So she walked over, grabbed candy, and as she was walking off to the side, I noticed there was a difference in the sound behind us than what I was hearing throughout. So right as she walked off to the side and I seen she walked to the side, I turned, I don't know if I turned fully or just my head. And as I turned, all I seen was the hood of a red vehicle. And I hit the red vehicle and rolled down to the side and landed directly between the Burris Logistics float and the red vehicle. And I seen the tire go directly in front of my face. Okay. So the Burris Logistics float that you just described, what was that? Um, there was a black truck pulling it. We had a, I believe there was a snowman in the back of the black truck, and then we had the Grinch in the float. Which side of the truck were you on when you were struck? I was on the driver's side of the Burris. Okay. Where was Adelia? Adelia, last, when she grabbed the candy and walked off to the side, I thought she was over by the sidewalk when I spun to look. And what did you see when you spun? The red hood of the vehicle. When did you next see Adelia? Um, after I realized what just happened, I jumped up and took off running to go find her. And I seen her in the middle of the road, which I don't know how she got to that position from where I seen her last, but she was lying in the middle of the road. And there were some people around her trying to help her. Her shoes were down the road, as well as her glasses. <laughs> Your Honor, Exhibit 22 has previously been received and published. I'd ask to publish that again for this witness. Permission granted. Oh my God! Oh my God! Ms. Grabo, did you see yourself in that video? Yes, I did. What about Adelia? Did you see her? I, with the amount of people, I did not directly see her. Okay, let's go back to the beginning. Let's go at about 50% speed. Objection, Mr. Relevance, Sean. Yield to us. Overruled. Grounds. It's relevant. Grounds. Do you see yourself at this three second mark? Yes, I do. Just tell us where you are in the screen. Um, we're directly in front of the black shirt band um, banner. Adelia is wearing a red like cape, shawl, with checkered, black and white checkered leggings. It was really cold and windy that day. And then I have the candy cane dress on with my jacket and a hat and candy cane leggings. And what does it appear at this moment that you're doing with Adelia? Giving her more candy. Uh, what did we see you doing at the end of the video there? I. It was laying between the vehicles. Did you get up at some point? Yes. Okay, and then? Ran directly to my daughter. What injuries, if any, did you sustain as a result of being struck by that SUV? Um, my, I think there's like ligament damage in my knee as well as my hand. Um, I did have some bruising and some road rash on my knees. Were you treated at a medical facility? Oh, uh, Waukesha Memorial Hospital. The night of the incident? It was way later. I went in because I rode in the ambulance with my daughter. I refused to go anywhere else besides stay with her the entire time. So I stayed with her. We rode two children's um, in the ambulance. They did check me in the ambulance and see that I was stable and okay to do what I was doing. So I stayed with my daughter at Children's Hospital, and I did not want to leave her until I knew she was at home in bed safe. What injuries, if any, did Adelia sustain? Massive bruising all up and down her back. Um, she had a broken hand, road rash all on her face. 
All the questions I have. Thank you. All right, thank you. Do you have any cross for this witness? Yes. Um, before you were struck by the vehicle, you said that um, you heard changes in sound to the parade that was the people marching in the parade in the back of you, right? Yes. Do you recall what the sounds were that you heard? It was just a change in the tone behind me. It wasn't the jubilee sound that we were hearing throughout the parade. You could tell something was happening behind us. Did it seem to get louder? Yeah. Was it already pretty noisy with the parade going on? It was, yeah, it was noisy. And you stated that it was uh, really windy and cold that, that uh, evening. Yes, very. Would it be any reason why you wouldn't be able to hear everything going on behind you? Not, I wouldn't say I wouldn't be able to hear everything behind us because there was, I heard the change in the sound of the band. So obviously I could hear what was going on directly behind me. Uh, the vehicle that struck you, do you recall seeing uh, a driver? No, I seen the red hood of the vehicle. That's so all I seen. So you, you didn't see uh, the driver or anybody in the vehicle? No, again, I just seen the red hood as it ran into me. No license plates or? No. Nope. You recall how fast the vehicle might have been traveling when you were struck? It had to have been going at decent speed. As I said before, I did see the rear tire going past my face, and it all happened extremely fast. So you don't recall? I, with the chaos that was going around that day, no, I do not remember exactly. And you stated that after you were struck, you got up and ran to your daughter, correct? Yes. And you were able to do that with your leg injury? Yes. I guess that would be the adrenaline going through your body at that moment in time. It did give me the strength to run to my daughter. So when was it that you knew that you had the, did you say knee injury? Yes, knee and hand. When did that pain in your leg set in? It was immediately. But you were still able to get up and run? Yeah. Do you recall how long before you received medical treatment? Um, we were there for quite a while. Um, I think we were one of the last ones to leave in the ambulance as I sat with my daughter at Children's Hospital. After I got her home, where I knew she was safe and secure, I then went, my sister took me to Waukesha Memorial Hospital at, I would guesstimate that was probably around two in the morning, right around there, after I knew my daughter was safe. So you, it's fair to say that you waited a little bit before you tended to yourself? I attended to my daughter prior to myself to make sure my daughter was safe, yes. Do you recall how long you retreated? Um, I'd probably say about two, two hours I was at the hospital. Did they, they give you any uh, pain medication or? I was taking ibuprofen and Tylenol, that is it. Do you recall what time you arrived at the parade? Um, well, since we were walking with the parade, we had to be there early. We staged probably around three, I would say, I think it was. And did you, were you able to see uh, what the vehicle did after you were struck? No, my only attention at that point in time was to find my daughter and attend to my daughter. So you didn't, you didn't see uh, the route that the, ve the vehicle traveled or anything after that? I seen the aftermath after it went through, that was it. Do you recall how long you were marching in the parade before you were struck? I do not recall how long we were there. Were you near any uh, cross streets or intersections? I don't know the name of the intersection, but yes, there was. I know we're right by Bosco's. There's a little walkway that takes you down to the river, or there's a little tiny side street off to the side. Do you recall if they were barricaded? I do not recall. Do you recall if any law enforcement may have been standing by those intersections? Do not recall. Do you recall any reports coming over uh, any radios by law enforcement? I do not recall that. The only thing I heard after we were hit was shots fired. So you did hear shots fired. Did that come from? I don't from? know if it was directly from a cop or if it was people running. 
Did you hear the shots? I did not. So after you were struck, it would be fair to say that it got louder than what it was before? After, in the middle of the complete chaos, yes. With all the noise and chaos going on, do you think it would have been hard for you to hear a horn honking? I did not hear a horn. Would it have been hard? The question was, would it have been hard for you to hear it? Before it got to us or after? After it became chaotic. I was not listening to listening for a horn after we had already been hit by the vehicle. So it would be fair to say you wouldn't be able to recall? I would not be able to recall that. Did you file any uh, claim in this incident? What do you mean by claim? Did you file a, a report as an injured party in this matter? Yes. So it would be fair to say that you identify yourself as an injured party? I was injured by the circumstances that day, yes. Do you recall uh, the, the officer that you reported your uh, claim with? I do not recall. Have you seen or read a complaint in this matter? What do you mean by that? Have you seen a written complaint or read a written complaint in this matter? Objection. Grounds. Mr. Brooks, are you referring to the criminal complaint in this case or something else? I'm referring to something else, the complaint. Well, then I'll sustain the objection uh, as to the form of the question. It's vague. May I respectfully ask on what grounds, Your Honor? It's vague. Next question or rephrase. Do you know of any complaint being filed in this matter? Objection. Vague. Grounds. Sustained. Grounds. As to the form of the question. Were you aware that it may be possible that you could give testimony in this matter? Yes, I was aware of that. Did you seek to give testimony in this matter? I was okay with doing so. And who were you informed by? Um, the district attorney's office. It, was that in form of a subpoena or was it a conversation? Or? Um, well, at first it was knowing that there was a possibility and then the subpoena. So it'd be fair to say that you did have a conversation? Conversation? With, with the district attorney's office? Yes. Did they ever inform you of who the plaintiff was in this matter? Objection, Collins. Grounds? Sustained. Are you aware of any plaintiff in this matter? Objection. Grounds? Relevance. Grounds? Sustained. <coughs> Have you ever talked to the plaintiff in this matter? Objection. Ever seen the plaintiff in this matter? Objection. Relevance. Grounds? Sustained under 906.11, Mr. Brooks. You need to move on to a new topic or I will close the cross-exam. I, I will move on. I'll just, it, it has to be some type of ground stated other than relevancy or or anything like that. The, the real ground should be put on record, Your Honor. We all deserve to know. The jury deserves to know. It's not relevant. Move on. So are you bringing this claim against the accused defending in this matter? Objection. Vague. Grounds. Sustained. On what grounds, Your Honor? It's vague. That's the form of the question. Have you received, uh, seek to receive any recovered damages or anything in the matter? Um, the only thing that we got were was help to pay for our medical bills, as that was something that was completely unexpected from a Christmas parade. Is that through uh, the state of Wisconsin? I, it was through. I forgot the name of what it was. Are you the, are you listed as a plaintiff in this matter? Am I listed as a plaintiff in this matter? Are you a plaintiff? Objection. Did you file the claim? Objection. That's a relevance. compound question. Grounds. Sustained as to the form of the question. Mr. Brooks. Did you file the claim? 11, move on. You've already asked about whether she filed a report. When she, move on. Do you see the state of Wisconsin president in the court? I don't know. Objection. Grounds. Grounds. Sustained under 906.11, I warned you to avoid that topic or I would cease cross-exam, so I'll give you one more opportunity to ask a different line of questioning. Do you recall when you gave your interview to law enforcement? Um, it was a few days after. Would it be fair to say it was a few days or a week or so? I don't actually remember the exact time. 
do you remember being interviewed by Detective Jeffrey Adent? I remember being interviewed. I don't remember what the officer's name was. Do you remember where you were interviewed? At my house. Do you recall if it was on November 30 of 2021? I don't remember the exact date. Can you recall why it took a little bit for you to be interviewed by law enforcement? I'm guessing because of how many people were injured throughout this parade. It did take a while to get around to everybody. Uh, did you seek to be interviewed in any way? I don't think I seeked, but I did inform them that I was injured as but well you, as my daughter. But you don't recall calling any law enforcement or attempting to file a report? Law enforcement that was there at the parade took people's name and it all ended up going to them. Did you follow up in the days after? I don't recall if I did. Do you recall stating that you did not see what happened to your daughter? I do recall that. Do you recall being left a business card by Dr. Daryl L. Williams, PhD? Yes, I do. Would it be fair to say that he was the one that told you what happened? I still to this day don't know directly what happened to my daughter. I just know that she was hit by the red vehicle as I was laying on the ground after I was hit. So it would be fair to say if you didn't see what actually happened to your daughter, you didn't see what happened to anyone else? Objection. Grounds. Grounds. Sustain this to the form of the question. Would it be fair to say that it was to see if anyone else was struck? From the position I was in, I seen a tire going in front of me. So no, I did not see directly anywhere besides the tire going in front of my face. So it would be fair to say that you didn't see anyone get struck besides yourself? It would be kind of difficult to see beyond that. No further questions. Uh, can I just clarify, Ms. Grabo? The last time you saw your daughter before you got struck, where was she? Irrelevant. Overruled. She was walking over, or she came over by me to get her can get more candy to pass out, and she was walking off to the sidewalk to hand out more candy. Sidewalk on which side of the Burris float? Objection hearsay. Overruled. That would be to the driver's side of, so to the left. Okay. And then you got struck. And where's the next place that you saw Adelia? I Objection seen Adelia. Hearsay. Overruled. She didn't see anything. It's not hearsay, Mr. Brooks. That's the definition hearsay. Uh, Mr. Brooks, the objection is noted. It's overruled. On what grounds, Your Honor? I direct your attention to Section 90801, sir. Um, you may answer the question. After I got up, I found my daughter in the middle of the road. She was no longer by the sidewalk. Was she, where was she in relation to the, the Burris, the truck that was pulling the float? Objection, hearsay. Overruled. Direct your attention to 90801, sir. It's not hearsay. Go ahead, you may answer. She was towards the driver's side, the front end of the vehicle. So she was more towards the front of the vehicle. You testified that after you were struck, uh, the noise in the area increased. It got louder. You yes. Were saying that? And so as a result of that increase in noise, you're not, you weren't listening for a horn? No. Okay. What about before you got struck? Did you hear the sound of a horn? I did not. Hearsay. It's not hearsay. Overruled. Would you just repeat your answer, please? I did not hear a horn. Thank you. Just you're doing fine, but if there is an objection, let me rule on it first, just so we're not talking over each other. Okay. Thank you. And I'm actually, I'm well done, Judge. Thank you. All right. Thank you. All right. You may step down. Thank you. Thank you. you may call your next witness in. The state will call Jeffrey Rogers. The you're about to give shall be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, so help you God. Yes. Thank you, sir. Please have a seat. The first thing I will ask you to do is to state your first and last names for the record and spell each, please. Okay. 
Jeff Rogers, J E F F R O G E R S. Thank you. Go ahead. Thank you. Sir, do you live in the city of Waukesha? Yes, I do. Are you familiar with the program, the Waukesha Blazers Youth Baseball Program? Yes, I am. Really overruled. Yes, I currently serve as the president. And what is the Blazers uh, Youth Program? Um, we have teams, we have a rookies program, which is ages five up to 12. We also have a select baseball program and softball program, and that ranges from ages seven all the way up through high school. Is this for boys and girls? Yes. So direct your attention to November 21st of last year, were, were the Blazers part of the city of Waukesha Christmas Parade? Yes, we were. And do you recall the day? Yes. Approximately what time did you have to get to the parade to set up? Um, it was probably about an hour before the parade started. And was the parade starting at approximately 4 o'clock? Yes. What was the weather like? It was cool, windy, I remember cloudy. Who was all walking with the Blazers that day? I, I mean, not names, but generally speaking, was it players, coaches? Sure, it was coaches, players, and some family members. Did you have a float? We had a pickup truck with a Christmas tree in the back. And was that pickup truck marked with the Blazers? We had banners on both sides of the truck, yes. Do you recall any groups that were in front, of, or a group that was in front of you or behind you? From my memory, I remember the extreme dance group in front of us. I don't remember who was in back. Okay. And were you there, was it just you, or did you have any kids that were involved in the program at that time? Um, I was there with three of my four children. Okay. Um, one of which was playing on my baseball team. Okay. And I'm assuming that there are other parents there? Yes. With their kids? And specifically, were two of your kids there, uh, Kaden, C-A-Y-D-E-N, and Riley, R-Y-L-E-E? -E? Yes. And which which one of those, does either one of those play with the, the program? Kaden plays on my team. Okay. And Riley was there for? Support. Okay. She used to play in the program. Okay. And then you had a third chap there? Yes. <clears throat> do you know Josh Creener? Yes, I do. And what is his involvement with the Blazers? He was a first-year coach for our 9U. Okay, and he was also walking? Yes, he was walking in the parade. And did you have a formation for the parade, or was it just people kind of walking next to the truck, behind the truck? Um, all over the truck, we were handing out little flyers. Promoting the Blazers, I'm assuming? Correct. Specifically, do you remember... Um, Two players, Jackson and Tucker Sparks. I do. Were they there? Yes, they were. And was their dad there? Yes. Okay, and they were also walking in the parade? Yes. Do you recall if they were wearing uniforms? Um, I believe Jackson was wearing his uniform. Um, I don't remember if Tucker was. I'm going to show you what's been um, at Exhibit 11, and I'm just going to display it in front of the screen in front of you. Jackson, how long? This is the video. It's two minutes and 29 seconds. So would that be the entire video? That would be the entire Exhibit 11. Right, go ahead. Okay, I'm going to stop the video at 28 seconds. Did you recognize that as the Blazers float or group that was marching the parade? Yes, I saw myself and all the people walking with me. Okay, did you see Josh Craner? I did. Did you see um, either one of your kids, Caden or Riley? I saw Caden and Maya. Okay. And then did you also see Jackson and Tucker Sparks? I did see Jackson. I don't recall seeing Tucker. Okay. Let's uh, play it again um, from the beginning. Can I pause it? Um, the shorter of the two kids, do you know, is that Jackson or Tucker? That's Jackson. Okay. So the taller is Tucker. I believe probably. so. Okay. At some point, there's a, a vehicle that came through the parade, correct? Correct. This was before that time period, correct? Yes. Okay. Did you hear any type of commotion or anything that drew your attention to behind you during the parade route? Yes, I remember hearing some sort of scream. Couldn't tell if it was part of the parade or not. Turned over my left shoulder um, to see, I remember a wheel falling over um, and thinking like, oh no, somebody fell off their bike or somebody got hurt. So I turned back around and at that point the screams got louder and I saw people running or heard people running and lots of screaming. So I turned around again and that's when I saw a red SUV coming at us and I pulled my daughter Maya out of the way. At that time, do you recall, you said Maya was next to you? Yes. Do you recall where Caden was? 
I remember Caden was up to the left of our vehicle. That's somewhere, I wasn't sure exactly. And if you can recall, was the, the vehicle in the middle of Main Street? Objection, hearsay. Overruled, you may answer, sir. Right. From what I remember, yes. And what side were you on? Were you at the back of the vehicle or the side of the vehicle? I was pretty much directly behind our vehicle in the middle of the road. Okay. And Caden was where in relationship to you? To my left. Okay. And your daughter, Maya? Maya was standing right next to me on my left. Okay. And Riley? And Riley was up somewhere by Caden. Do you recall where Josh Crater was? Josh was to my left as well. And how about Jackson and Tiger Sparks? I recall them being in front of me, I'm not sure, maybe a little to the left as well. So when you looked back, you said you heard screaming, you heard yelling and running. Did you hear a horn honking? I did not. When you first observed the red SUV, first of all, strike that, was there a group immediately after the Blazers team in the parade? Objection. Really? Overruled. You may answer, sir. Are you talking behind us or in front of us? Uh, behind. Was there someone directly behind you or was there a gap between you and whoever was behind you? If you recall when you look back, was there a float right behind you? I don't remember seeing a float right behind us. Okay. And people were running. Could you tell where they were running? From what I remember, running towards me and to the sides of the street. And when you first saw this, you said a red vehicle? Yes. Did you have a more, uh, was it a car, a SUV, a pickup truck? I remember it being larger than a car. What, how I described it to other people as an SUV. And how is it coming at you? Was it on the, um, it sounds like you were behind the truck. You said Caden was to your left, which would be, and I'm horrible at directions, but that would be the south of the side of the street. Was it coming on the south side of the street, the middle of the street, or the north side of the street, which would have been to your right? Okay, Overruled, you may answer. From what I remember, it was middle, um, and then it moved to the, to the left to go around our truck. Okay. As it was coming towards you, what did you do? My first reaction was to grab Maya, and she slipped through my hands the first time, and then luckily I grabbed her the second time and pulled her to the side. Um, immediately was trying to put her in the back of our vehicle because I didn't know if more cars were coming. When you um, say the back of your vehicle, the Blazers vehicle, or did you have a personal vehicle also in the parade? The Blazers pickup truck. And then what happened? Sure. So after I got her up in the truck, I was frantically looking for my kids. I watched the SUV continue driving um, down the parade route, swerved back to the right after it passed our truck. Um, I was screaming, where is Riley? Um, Caden found me and I tried to get him in the back of the truck as well. Um, from there, I was yelling at him, asking where Riley, well, screaming, where is Riley? He didn't know. Um, so I ran around the truck a couple times and that's when I uh, saw Jackson on the ground and stopped by him to check on him. So where was Jackson's in relationship? I'm assuming that once the red SUV came through, did the parade stop? Yes. Where was Jackson in relationship to the Blazers pickup truck? From what I remember, he was in the front of the truck, to the left. Was there anyone else around him at that time? Um, his dad, Aaron. Did you talk to Aaron? I did. And um, could you, what observations did you make of Jackson? Jackson was motionless on the ground, eyes open, didn't appear to be aware. Did he appear to be alive? Was unsure. Did he later, did you find out that he died as a result of being struck? I did. So when the car came through, the red SUV, it went to which side of the truck? The left side. Okay. And that's where you said Caden was. Did you see, did Caden get struck? Caden told me he did. Okay. What injuries did he have? Objection, you're saying, just saying, tell It's not for sure. Overall, this witness may answer based on personal knowledge. So Caden said he saw the... Hold on. Um, that would be hearsay. So I'll sustain the objection if you would rephrase that question. What injuries did Caden have? He um, had bruising on his right elbow. And do you know if Caden got struck by the red SUV? Objection, hearsay. Overruled. Yes, he did. 
Did you see Jackson or Tucker Sparks get struck by the SUV? Sitting here today, I do not remember that. Okay. Um, did you give a statement at some point, I think it was part of a parade survey, if you recall that? Yes. Um, that was, I think, created by the Victim Witness Program, sent out by the Victim Witness Program, and then you would have sent it back, do you recall that? Yes, I do. And um, was that something that you created? Yes, those are my words. Okay. And is it correct that that form says, after that I saw the car drive past us on the left, striking two of our players, Tucker and Jackson Sparks? Yes. Jackson, hearsay. Overruled. Yeah, it's hearsay. Overruled his answer, may stand. Thank you. Um, I'm assuming that the event was fresher in your mind um, when you gave that statement versus a year later? Yes, I believe everything in that statement is accurate. Okay, thank you. And do you know if Jackson Sparks was injured? I'm sorry, Tucker Sparks. Yes, he was. Okay, do you know um, what injuries he had? Objection, hearsay. Overruled. I remember the most significant was brain bleed or a head injury. And did you eventually find your, your daughter Riley? I did. Where was she? She was across the street. So I had taken my and Caden into the antique shop on the south side of the road. She was across the street in the Civic Theater. Was she injured as a result of the a car striking her? She was. And what car struck her? The red SUV. Okay. What injuries did she receive? She had multiple cuts, bruises, scraping on both of her legs. Um, her knee was pretty <coughs> badly bruised. Now, after the car went to the left side of the Blazer's truck, striking the kids, did you see the path that it took? Objection hearsay. Overruled. Yes, I remember it going back to the right side of the road after that. So after it passed the truck? Yes. Did it strike the Blazer's truck at all? I don't remember. Okay. So it went to the right, the far right side of the road? Yes. And then did you see it from there? That's the last memory I have of it. So, do you know approximately how far Jackson was in front of the Blazers truck um, when you went and you talked to his father, Aaron, who was with Jackson? I don't remember. Okay. Did the vehicle stop? No, it didn't. Did you see it stop um, at any time while you had view of it? No. Can you estimate approximately how fast it was going before when you first took notice of the red SUV when you looked back? Objection, hearsay. Overruled. I remember thinking, this is a parade. It's 25 mile an hour speed limit here. If I were in my neighborhood and a car was going that fast, I would be yelling at it so faster than the speed limit. And I'm assuming when you're in a parade, you're not going, although the speed limit on that road might be 25 miles per hour, you're not going 25 miles per hour. Would that be a correct? Statements. Absolutely. Overruled his answer, my stand. Now, before you went into the antique store, was was there anyone yelling anything about shots being fired? Yeah, I don't remember who um, yelled it, but I heard shots were fired and to get inside the nearest building. And did you go in right away, or did you were you still looking around the car for Riley? Right. I didn't have Riley at the time, so I had to make a decision that I had two out of my three kids and took them into the antique store after that. Prior to going into the antique store, did you see Jackson again? I don't remember if it was before or when I came out of the antique store. Okay. So did you see Jackson a second time um, on Main Street? Yeah. Overruled. Where was that or where was he? Yeah. So after I put Caden and Maya in the antique store. I asked the couple there to watch them because I was going to go find my other daughter. Ran back outside on the main street and that's when I saw Jackson again. And at that point, I believe a woman was trying to perform CPR on him. Did you ever see Josh Craner while you were outside? I remember. After the vehicle had gone through, I apologize. No, that's fine. After um, running back outside, I remember seeing a someone near our truck that had a jacket, a brownish jacket on, and at the time I believed it was Josh. I didn't know him well at the time. And where was he? He was on the left side of the vehicle, our vehicle. On the ground, did you say? Yes, he was laying on the ground. Okay. And at some point, did you, um, how did you find Riley? I received a phone call when I was in the antique store. 
It was a phone call or a text message from my friend, Ben. And what did, did he have Riley? Yeah, he said he was with her across the street and that she, her legs were injured, but she was okay. okay. And that's what I was just gonna say. As a result, you had indicated that Caden did receive an injury um, from being struck by the car? Yes. Did Riley receive an injury? Yes. What were her injuries? She had scrapes, bruises, um, abrasions uh, up and down her legs. And that was from the vehicle? Yes. Okay. Um, permission to publish and admit exhibit um, 148 into evidence. Objection. Objection is noted. Exhibit 148 is received. Permission to publish is granted. Grounds. Sir, it's approximately three minutes and 22 seconds. I'm going to play that entire video um, initially and then we'll, we'll talk about it. Sir, I, you just gave a, a testimony with regard to your actions. Did you see yourself in that video doing a lot of the things that you just testified to? Yes, I did. Okay. Now, it looks like there's quite a few people in there walking behind Waxha Blazers truck. Are all those people part of the Waxha Blazers uh, program? It appears so, yes. Okay. So either parents, players, or support? Yes. And do you see yourself? I do. And can you circle where you are? And your daughter? Maya is right here. And you see Caden? No, I don't. And you see Josh Craner in this frame? No, I don't. Okay. That's... Do you know what you were looking back at? It seemed like, as I started saying before, a lot of people were looking behind you. Is that when you heard, um, you, saw, you said something about a wheel tipping? Yeah, I remember the first time I turned back, seeing something tip, whether it was a stroller, a wheelchair, a bike some sort of tire is in my mind and hearing screams at that time thinking that somebody got hurt. Then you said you turned back face forward and then something else drew your attention back? Correct. And what was that? Um, the screaming. Now do you see Josh Craner in this frame? I do. Okay and can you circle him where he's at? He was running right there. And, and you saw the video straight through before, correct? Correct. And Josh Craner is about to get struck by the car, correct? Correct. Okay, so let's uh, play that through. Stop the video. Do you know where uh, Josh Crater was laying approximately? To the left side of our vehicle. That's about all I remember. Okay, did you see two bodies flying forward? Yes. Uh, do you recall, as you look at this picture, where uh, Jackson was of the two bodies that flew forward? 
I believe he was on the left side of the truck as well. And do you know who the body is that's to the right of, of Jackson? Um, I don't, looking at it from here. And do you know as um, Jackson and Tucker were marching to the left of the truck as you testified to, were they close together in um, distance? Yes, they were, they were close. Okay. What do you see you doing now? I picked up Maya and I'm running to check on Jackson. And over the can, top of him right now. Okay. I was just going to say, if you can narrow rate, and that you said that at approximately 31 seconds, you were over the top of Jackson. Yes. And now I just grabbed Ella, another one of our members. Pause. You can pause the video. Okay. And what are you doing? Putting Maya in the back of the truck to keep her safe. And how about Ella? Ella, I was bringing her with me too, so I knew where she was. Okay. At this point, had you seen Caden? No. Okay. Continue. That I'm talking awesome. to Caden now. You're lifting someone up into the pickup truck? Yes, that's Caden. Okay. And I'm yelling at him, asking where Riley is, and he's telling me he doesn't know. I told him to stay there, and I was going to go run and try to find her as I went to the left of the truck, as I knew she was on that side. Is that you running down I, the street? I saw somebody down in the road. Praying it wasn't her, it was not. You said you saw someone else in the road. Um, did it appear that that person was injured? Yeah, they were down on the ground with people around them. Okay. Telling awesome. the kids that it'll be okay and they're safe now with the truck. At two minutes in, had you find, found Riley yet? No. Okay. There I'm pointing out that Boss. we need medical attention. Who needs medical attention? Jackson. At that point, I was just talking to Caden again, asking him if he remembered where Riley was. And I told him to come and help me find her. At this point, people are rushing in the stores as we heard shots were fired. So I grabbed my and Caden and ran into the nearest open door that I could find. Thank you. All right, I'm going to take a mid-morning break at this point, about uh, 15 to 20 minutes. All rise for the jury, please. All right, thank you everyone. We are in recess. Sir, you may step down as well. I'll be back in 20 minutes. All right, we will go back on. The record appearances are as they were before. Um, I will have the jury brought out and we'll continue with uh, the questioning of this witness. Um, the judicial determination you made about the uh, jurisdiction I thought it was very clear, sir. So will proof be validated? Your request is denied. On what legal basis, Your Honor? The record stands, sir. Is that a judicial determination? My ruling was put on the record earlier, sir. So that is a judicial determination? All rise. Thank you, everyone. Please be seated. Mr. Brooks, you may start your questioning of this witness then. Just a second, I'm going to... I'm sorry about that, Just, I just needed a second. Acting! <laughs> I apologize to the witnesses. A little emotional right now for me, so I apologize to the court as well for the delay. Can you recall um, what time you arrived at the parade that evening? I don't remember exactly. Do you recall how long you intended to stay? Through the parade, until it was done. When you testified earlier to uh, seeing uh, some of the video footage that, that was played, would that be fair to say? Yes, that's fair to say. Do you recall how many times before today you saw the video footage? I believe I saw one of the videos once. And you don't recall seeing any of the other videos? Maybe clips. We were bouncing around. Do you recall by whom you were showing the videos? Um, the folks at the prosecution table. That referring to the three prosecutors sitting there right now? Yes. All three? Yes. You stated that 
You stated in testimony earlier that you did not see the vehicle uh, strike the children that were in front of you. Would that be fair to say? I said sitting here today, I don't remember that. You said something to that effect. Would that be fair to say? You'd have to be more clear. You said something to that effect of what you just said. To what effect? That you sitting here today that you do not recall seeing anyone struck ahead of you. That's correct. And then, and then you also stated that you did see who was struck ahead of you. Is that a question? Would that be fair to say? In relation to what? In relation to someone being struck in front of you. When I was there or the video, what are you talking about? At any time. When you was there. When I wrote my statement, I wrote what I remembered at that time. Would it be fair to say that as you sit here today that anything about your statement may have changed? Nothing has changed. So your testimony here today would be accurate to which you reported? Everything I said has been accurate. Do you recall saying in your interview with the DIC that your 11-year-old son and 9-year-old daughter suffered minor injuries in the event? I remember saying they were injured. Do you recall saying that the injuries were minor? No. Not direct witness to the statement? Do you have a copy of that? Yes, right here. Is it his statement or a summary? It's not his statement. It is a statement from DCI, um, an agent from DCI, in which he, the DCI agent spoke with Mr. Rogers and wrote down what he believed um, was said to him. Um, it was not signed by Mr. Rogers. It was not reviewed by Mr. Rogers. Uh, therefore, I would object to this being characterized as this witness's statement. Grounds. Uh, if he would like to call the DCI agent, then he may do so. Grounds. Um, right, I'm going to sustain the objection as to the form of the question. Rephrase, if you're able. Do you recall stating to whomever interviewed you from the DCI that the injuries were minor? No. Any reason why they would report that you said that? I don't know. You'd have to ask them. Any reason why they would believe that that's what you said? Objection. Reported. Grounds. Relevance. Grounds. Calls for speculation on the part of the witness. <coughs> Sustained. Do you remember uh, giving a prepared statement at 10.45 a.m. on 11.22 of 2021? I do. Do you recall the gist of what you prepared? Can you be more specific? Specifically, that you heard commotion turned around to see a stroller or something fall over about a block and a half behind us. Yes. You recall making that statement? I do. About how many people would you estimate was at the parade that day? I would guess the thousands. And you were able to see something fall over from a block and a half away amidst thousands of people? Yes. And you don't recall what that was that you saw? No. Any reason as to why you would name what you saw fall if you don't recall it? I described it. So you did see something fall? Objection asked and answered. Asked and answered and sustained. Do you recall what the item was? Objection. Grounds. Asked and answered. Grounds. S sustained. Do you recall about what time you um, heard that shots were fired? After watching the video, it's about three minutes, two, three minutes after the red SUV drove by us. Do you recall the day of the incident, not the video? I remember it was after the vehicle drove by us. Did you hear the shots? No. Do you remember who that was reported by? I don't. What did you do after you heard that shots were fired? I looked for all of my children again and made the decision to take two of them into the antique store. About how long did it take you to look for everybody before you went into the antique store? Before or after the shots fired comment? After the shots fired comment. I think I did another lap around the car and then around our blazer truck and then grabbed my kids and left. Were you able to retrieve everyone at that time? No. You recall who was missing? <laughs> Riley was missing. 
did you leave the antique shop any time after you had gathered your loved ones into the antique shop? Yes. About how long before you left the antique shop? I don't remember. Do you remember what you did when you left the antique shop? I remember at some point seeing Jackson again on the ground. Did you continue looking for the loved one that you missed before you gathered the other ones into the antique shop? To the best of my recollection. You don't recall for sure? It was pretty chaotic. I was looking constantly for my missing daughter. Did you end up finding her? I did not find her, no. And who was Ben White? He was another coach with the Blazers and a friend. Was he with you in the antique shop? No. So at some point you got separated, would that be fair to say? Separated from him. Separated from being. We were all separated as soon as the car drove by. Any idea where he may have gone at that time? No. You remember talking to him after you had gathered everybody in the antique shop? I remember at some point he reached out. I don't remember if it was text or phone call. Yes. Did he say if he was injured in any way? I don't remember. Were you injured in any way? No physical injuries. Was it pretty windy that day? From your recollection? <coughs> from what I remember, there was a pretty good breeze, yes. Pretty cold? It was cool. Pretty loud? Normal parade sounds. Would that be characterized as loud? I guess it depends who's... That would be subjective to the person <laughs> there. Would you say it was loud? Not overly loud. So you yourself were able to be, to hear pretty good over a parade with thousands of people? I would say so, yes. You had one of your daughters, Maya, with you that day. Would that be fair to say? That's fair to say. Was she injured in the event? I threw her to the ground to get her out of the way, so she had some scrapes. And would that result from you throwing her to the ground? I don't know. Did she say that she had been injured in any way? No. Do you recall if anyone, anyone else besides uh, your children who were injured? I remember lots of people who were injured. Do you recall? I just answered that. Specifically? Do you remember who besides your children? You want me to list all of the names that were injured? No, uh, just rough estimate. That you recall? That I recall 10 to 15 people that I that saw. You, that you actually observed? Yes. Did you uh, render any assistance to any of those people? No. Any reason why not? My daughter was missing. So it would be fair to say at that moment your concern was your daughter that you didn't retrieve to go into the antique shop? My concern was for everyone that was just struck by the vehicle. Including your daughter that was missing, right? I was concerned about her missing, yes. Did you file any uh, reports other than uh, just... To Interview? What do you mean? Like an injury reporter of any kind? Just what you had in front of you that you were reading from. That was my statement. No, no. Did you file any injury reports or? Judge, that's a big question. Grounds. Sustain us to the form of the question, sir. Please rephrase. What I'm asking is, you know, usually if there's an injury you will file a complaint to the best of your recollection. Did you file any complaint from the incident? I wouldn't consider it a complaint. I filed some paperwork saying that my children were injured, yes. Do you recall if that was a complaint? <laughs> I don't know. Was it a claim in any sort of way? Yes. Do you recall what the claim was? It was with the victim assistance program. And uh, what does that consist of? What, what are their resources in pursuant to the complaint that you filed or claim that you filed, right? Can you rephrase? What, what would be their assistance in to help you with your claim that you were filing? Um, it was to help with any medical bills that arose out of this situation. So it would be fair to say that you had a financial interest in this incident? This Grounds. characterizes the, the testimony. Grounds. I believe it's relevant to the fact that bills were needed to be paid. It's relevant. Overruled, he may, he may answer. I was looking to get the medical bills covered, yes. 
So would that be fair to say that you had a financial interest? I would say sitting here today, I didn't care if it got approved or not. I was take, trying to get assistance for the medical bills. So if it hadn't gotten approved, would you have been able to do it yourself or would you have seek to do it yourself? Just relevance. Grounds. Um, sustaining the question is vague. Would you, would you have seeking, would, would you have paid the medical bills yourself? Yes. Regardless to price? I generally pay my bills. And that, and specifically that matter. Not the rest of your bills, specifically that matter. Objections Grounds. Sustained. Move on, Mr. Brooks. Would you consider yourself an injured party in this case? No. Were you aware that you might be called to testify in this case? Eventually, yes. Did you seek to testify in this case? No. May I ask why you agreed to testify if you didn't seek to? Objections Grounds. Sustained. Do you recall who informed you via subpoena to testify? I received a subpoena from the DA's office, yes. You did? Yes. Oh. Sorry, I didn't hear that. No problem. Are you aware of the plaintiff in this case? Objection. Browns? Sustained. Have you read a complaint pursuant to this case in any in, at any time? Not that I remember, no. Do you understand that for uh, charges to be issued that it has to be a claim, therefore it has to be a plaintiff? Uh, objection. The grounds. Okay, so first of all, the grounds, the grounds are relevancy. Um, it's not relevant, that would be the grounds. You also have to state the grounds. Hold on, let her get her position out, Mr. Brooks. And it mischaracterizes the former testimony. It Sustained as to both grounds. Under 90611, move on, please. So you're not sure if there is a plaintiff? Objection, relevance. Sustained. Have you ever had any any interaction with the plaintiff? Objection. Grounds. Sustained. Are you aware who brought charges in this matter? Objection, Grounds. Sustained. If you're not sure of a complaint, how can you be sure of the charges in this case? Objection. Grounds. Sustained. Mr. Brooks, under 9611, please move on to a new topic or your cross-examination will be shortened and cut off. Your Honor, with all due respect, this, every question that I'm asking is relevant. It, it pertains to the plaintiff in this matter that seems to be nowhere so found. Making a legal argument, we'll take that up outside the presence of the jury. Move on. I believe the jury deserves to know the, who the plaintiff is in this matter. That's, that's very relevant to the case. How can they rule on something when they don't Mr. Brooks, know who the plaintiff is? Please, move on. Next question, or I will turn it back over the, to the state for redirect. Can you recall if you saw the driver of the vehicle? I don't remember seeing the driver. Were you able to catch a glimpse of the license plates? No. Do you recall if the vehicle had any tinted windows? I don't remember. About how far from the vehicle were you when it passed you? From the red SUV. About how far from the vehicle were you when it passed you? Can you... Tell me which vehicle you're talking about. How far from the vehicle were you when it passed you? The vehicle that went around your Blazers vehicle. The red. I guess I would ask the defendant Browns. to be more clear as to what vehicle and when it went around. Like at the beginning I, of the parade, before just, it struck his kids. I was just clear. I said the vehicle that went around his Sustained Blazers vehicle. Sustained as to the form of the question. Please rephrase. The vehicle that you observe, um, or rather I'll say the vehicle that you observe approaching, about how far from you, from it, were you when it passed you? Objection, just to clarify, is he saying the, the red SUV that this witness has described as that red SUV was approaching him or some other vehicle? Sustain us to the form of the question. Well, I thought he was clear when he said that there was only one vehicle. question, Mr. Brooks. Excuse me, Your Honor. You have to be clear with your question. It's vague. Well, As to the word vehicle, you need to be clear which vehicle you're questioning the witness the about. The vehicle that was approaching. That he said At was what approaching. point in time, what color is the vehicle, something like that, sir. The vehicle that you desire to stri strike anyone. How close, to you were, how close were you to that vehicle when it passed you? The red SUV was about 10 feet probably from me. And you didn't see the driver? 
correct? Correct. Did you see anyone else in the vehicle? I did not look in the vehicle. Would that be a no? That's a no. Thank you. Would it be fair to say that 10 feet from a vehicle is pretty close? Subjective. What would you say? Would you say that's pretty close? It depends what you're talking about. Would you say that 10 feet is pretty close to a vehicle? Depends. If they're driving, yes. Would it be fair to say that that's close enough to be able to see who was driving? It depends on many other factors. What would those factors be? Eyesight, windows up, down. Um, if they're looking at the vehicle. I'm assuming it would be fair to say that you were definitely looking at the vehicle, correct? Would that be fair to say? When? When it was approaching and when it passed? Yes. Any reason why you would not try to identify the driver? Because my children were about to be struck. Any reason why you would not try to see if you can catch a license plate number? Because people had just been hit. So it would be fair to say because of what you was observing, that would be the reason why you didn't try to give a, get a description of the driver or the license plate. My priority at the time was not identifying the driver. No further questions. Thank you. Any redirect? Just briefly, Your Honor. Sir, you had indicated that you submitted a claim to the victim witness program for medical bills. Is that correct? Correct. Were those the medical bills for Caden and Riley that were incurred as a result of the red SUV hitting both of those children? Yes. Objection. Overruled. His answer may stand. And it was yes? <coughs> yes. Wait I sure. No thank you. No further questions. Thank you. All right. Thank you. You may step down. All right. You may call your next witness. Today we call Josh Prater. Good morning, sir. If you would please make your way to the witness stand, which is up a riser to my right. When you get there, please remain standing. Raise your right hand. My clerk, Teresa, who's on my left, will swear you in. Nothing but the truth, so help you, God. Thank you, sir. Please be seated. The first thing I will ask you to do is to state your first and last names for the record and spell each, please. Joshua Craner, J-O-S-H-U-A, Craner, K-R-A-N-E-R. Thank you. Go ahead. Sir, I'm going to direct your attention to November 21st of, of last year, 2021. Were you at the City of Waukesha Christmas Parade? Yes, I was. And were you a participant or a spectator? Participant. And what group were you with? The Waukesha Blazers. And what was your affiliation with the Waukesha Blazers? I'm a head coach of the Slammers, which the was at the time a 9 new baseball team. How long had you been involved with the Blazers? Just a couple months. Did you have any children that were part of the Blazers program? Yes. yes and and how, how many kids? Just one. Okay. So on that day, were you there with your son or daughter? My son and my wife. Okay. And you were marching with the Blazers? Yes. Do you recall what you were doing? Were you handing out candy, handing out flyers? Um, we were um, handing out flyers. To support the Blazers program? Yeah, to um, recruit people for the rookie program. What did the Blazers have a float in the parade? We had a truck. Okay. And was it marked with the Blazers <coughs> logo on it? Yes. Do you recall what color it was? No. Okay. And where were you in relationship to the truck? Was the truck in front of the people with the Blazers or was the truck behind the, the people? We had um, players on both sides of the vehicle. Um, I was walking the majority in the back of behind the truck during the parade. Okay. Did there come a time when you heard a commotion behind the truck? Yes. Can you describe for the jury what exactly you heard? I heard screaming. Now, you were at a parade, so I'm assuming as part of a parade there's normally screaming. Was it something different? Yes. Can you describe it? Horrific. I'm sorry? Horrific. Okay. What did you do? I turned around to look at what was going on. What did you see? I saw a um, red um, Ford Escape up on the curb. I saw people throwing themselves out of the way. Now when you say you saw the vehicle up on the curb, um, can you describe that for the jury what you mean by that? It wasn't in the roadway. So I'm assuming that the parade is taking place on Main Street in the city of Waukesha? Yes and the, the cars and the parade participants would be within the, um, 
the areas between the two curbs. Yes. And this car was up on a curb? What I remember, yes. Okay. Did you see that car strike any people? No. Okay. You saw people running from the area that the car was coming from? Yes. What did you do? I instantly tried to find my son. How old is your son? He's 10 now. Nine at the time of the parade? Yes. Where was he when you last saw him before looking to your back when you heard the commotion? He was on the left side of the truck. Okay. And did you see him when you looked back? No. Then what happened? I was struck by the vehicle. Where did the vehicle strike you? I don't remember. Okay. Did you receive injury, injuries as a result of the vehicle striking you? Yes. And what were those injuries? Um, I couldn't walk. I was in the hospital. Um, I had um, muscle um, contusions. I had bone bruises. Um, Did the vehicle, when it struck you, or after it struck you, did the con vehicle continue on with its path of travel down the parade route? Yes. Overruled. And did you see the path it took after striking you? Yes. Where did it go? Forward. Did it, could you tell if it went straight ahead, swerved one way or the other way? No. Overruled, he may answer. No. When you were struck, do you recall if you were to the left of the Blazers truck or if you were still in the middle of the Blazers truck? I was on the left. You were, were you knocked to the ground? Yes. What do you recall after the truck went past as you're laying on the ground? I just remember tires going by. Going over you or just by you? When I first recall it, it seemed like it was going over me. But I, don't, I can't, I, to be honest with you, I don't know. Then what did you next recall? <coughs> uh, people coming over to me. Okay. Did you see your son? No. Um, did you eventually meet up with your son while you were still on Main Street? Yes. Okay. And was he injured? No. I'm going to show you what's been previously received as State's Exhibit 11, and I'm going to ask that it be published to the jury or for the jury. Do you see yourself, it's been paused at 18 seconds, do you see yourself in this still shot? Yes. And that, that's you marching the parade, correct? Yes. Okay. And do you know, was the truck playing any music as the parade was, did you guys have any sound coming from your area? I do not remember. Okay. Do you recall if you heard a horn honking after seeing the red SUV? No. You did not hear any horn honking? No. Next I'm gonna show you, um, Exhibit 148, which has been previously admitted into evidence, I'd ask that it be published to the jury. What did you see in that video, sir? Being struck. Okay. Do you recall what you were running towards? My son. And that would have been where he was um, at at that time of the parade? Yes, on the left side. Do you recall where Jackson and Tucker Sparks were at that time? No. Okay. I have nothing. Further? No, thank you. All right, you may take the video down, please. All right, go ahead. I'll video. Oh, let me know when you need it. Go ahead, you may start your cross. Uh, can you pull that exhibit up again, 148? Uh, can, you, can you identify for the jury where you are in this video if you see yourself? You can unpause it. From just looking at the video, have you seen this video before today? Just still shots of it, not the video itself. So it'd be fair to say that this is only your second time seeing this video? Yes. Do you recall giving a, a, a statement to uh, Officer Copil? I don't remember the name of the officer. Do you recall giving a statement to an officer? An FBI agent, yes. Um, do you recall if uh, you you gave them a summary of what you remember if you actually wrote the statement yourself? I don't think I wrote it. Do you recall saying that you needed a walker to assist you in moving? Yes. Would it be fair to say that you're moving pretty good these days? That's just relevant. Grounds. Sustained. Would it be fair to say that 
you're walking pretty good as of now. Objection. Grounds. Sustained. Not relevant. Did you also remember stating that you don't remember much from the event? I do not remember saying that. And the, I guess it would be the summary of the report of the statement that you gave to the officer, which I have right here. It says that you stated that you don't remember much from the event, but made it clear that your primary concern was needing to know where your children were after being struck. Would that be fair to say? Yes. Do you recall uh, what you did after being struck? I could not move. I was on the ground. Do you recall how long before you you were moved from your position? A couple of minutes. Uh, were you helped by someone or? Yes, two people. And where did they take you? Into the um, joke shop. And from there, did you receive any medical attention? Yes. Do you recall where that was? Uh, Memorial Hospital. You recall who took you to Memorial Hospital? A squad car. You remember the officer's name? No. Do you recall what date you made the report to the officer? Or the date that you were interviewed, rather? Which time? So there was more than one time? Yes. Do you recall making a re, uh, or giving an interview rather on the 24th of November of 2021? Yes. Do you recall what date the other report was taken? Uh, the night of. Do you remember by whom that night? An FBI agent. After being struck, you, you testified that you saw the vehicle kind of go up on the curb. Would that be fair to say? Can you ask that again? What did you see the vehicle do after it struck you? After it struck me, I continued. <coughs> what did you see it do? Drove off. Did you see it strike anyone at that point? No. Or were you able to get a look at the driver in any way? No. A license place number in any way? No. You testified for the jury earlier that you heard uh, screams from behind you before you were struck. Would that be fair to say? <laughs> yes. Did you see the vehicle approaching at that point? Did you turn and see if anything was approaching at that point, rather? Yes. About how far was the vehicle away from you at that time that you observed it? 20 yards. You were able to make that assumption how? I'm a coach and we go off yards a lot. That makes sense. Would it be fair to say that that's relatively close? Yes. Close enough for you to see into the vehicle? I did not see into the vehicle. So it would be fair to say that at no time during the incident you saw the driver? No, I did not. And just so I'm correct for the record, you said that um, were, were your, you said that your children were not injured in the incident. Would that be fair to say? Not physically. Where else? Um, the witness answered it. His answer may stand. So the objection is overruled. And when you were treated at uh, Memorial Hospital, um, did you receive any um, any pain medication, Tylenol, ibuprofen, anything like that? Yes. Do you recall how long you had to be treated before you were discharged? One day. In the days after the event, did you uh, file any claim whatsoever? Can you be more descriptive? Um, did you file a, a claim as an injured party? Yes. Do you remember who that was with? No. So would you consider yourself to be an injured party in this matter? Absolutely. So you would consider yourself to be a plaintiff? Objection. Grounds? Sustained. On relevance grounds. And under 90611 as well. Do you recall who called you to testify in this matter? The DA. Can you point out for the jury which DA? No. Do you see him in court? No. Do you recall the name of the DA that you were referring to? I guess. Sustained. He's already indicated that the 
district attorney's office issued the subpoena. Well, actually, he said the DA, so that was pretty vague. Sir, did you mean the district attorney's office? Yes. Next question, please. Were you subpoenaed? Yes. Do you recall the name on the subpoena? Objection. Grounds? Sustained. So to the best of your knowledge, you're not aware of any plaintiff in this matter? Objection, relevance. Sustained. To the best of your knowledge, you have never seen the plaintiff in this matter? Objection, relevance. Sustained. Have you ever seen or read a complaint in this matter of any kind? Yes. Would you state what that was for the record and for the jury? I just saw the stuff on the news. And seeing stuff on the news would amount to a complaint? Sorry, I misheard your question. Can you ask it again? Have you read or seen a complaint in this matter? No. But it would be fair to say, just based on your testimony, that you saw reporting on the incident in the news. Would that be fair to say? Yes. Do you recall what you saw in the news? Just information about the trial. Did you see anything before the reported trial? No. Would it be fair to say that this uh, matter has been going on for quite some time, that there were a lot, a lot of reports in the news? Would that be fair to say? Objection relevance. Grounds. Ms. Brooks, unless you can tie it in to relevance with this I'm, witness, I'm inclined to I'm, sustain I'm that going, objection. I'm going somewhere with it. Then just ask the question, sir. Have you yourself seen anything in the news before the scheduled trial in regards to this matter? Yes. Can you state for the record and for the jury what that was? Just information about the trial itself. Did you at any time see any reports about the, the alleged defendant at any time? Mr. Brooks, I'm gonna, under 906.11, um, this is not a witness who identified the driver, so I'm not sure where the relevance is of this. We'll take it up outside the presence of the jury uh, once you're concluded with your questions, and I'll determine if there needs to be more questioning of this witness. Next topic, please. You testified a few minutes earlier that you really don't remember much after being struck. Do you recall... Do you recall where you were after being struck? I was on the ground. And about which area? Was it by the uh, Blazers truck, relatively close to the curb, or about what position? Near the truck. Near the Blazers truck? Yes. Did you see the vehicle strike anyone before it struck you? No. No further questions. Thanks. Thank you, sir. You may step down. Um, before he's excused, I'm just going to excuse the jury momentarily. Um, we'll let you know when you can be brought back in. I'll rise for the jury, please. Thank you. All right, thank you. Be seated. Mr. Brooks, I cut you off when you were asking questions about what this witness had seen on the news. Um, and I'll give you an opportunity to t give me an offer of proof as to why you believe that's relevant and specifically as to uh, this witness. Well, it's relevant because of how close he testified to being away from the vehicle. He, he testified to being 20 yards away from the vehicle, which is, is not super close, but it's not far enough that you wouldn't be able to see a driver or see into the car. Well, so that's an argument, sir. So what questions would you have that you didn't already ask and why, how does the news reports relate to that? Maybe he may have seen the, the alleged defendant on the news and maybe that may jog his memory back to if he seen the driver. But he testified he couldn't, he didn't see the driver. So he I also never... testified, he also testified to never making the comment that he didn't remember the event, but it's clearly in his summary and in his report that he said that. So it's, it's conflicting. His, his report is conflicting with what he's testifying. So I was trying to get at the credibility of it. That was my whole aim. What does the news reports have to do with that, sir? 
the news reports are relevant just by the sheer amount of reporting that they that they've been report. This has been going on for a year. They've that assumes facts, not an evidence, sir. So this witness did not identify you during this trial. This witness testified as to his observations uh, regarding the date in question, his injuries, and other things surrounding what he saw and heard and what he didn't see and hear. So the news reports uh, don't have any bearing on his credibility. The points that you bring up are arguments that you are that you may make if you choose um, during your closing arguments. Um, but the questions you are asking don't further that um, theory. So that's why I cut you off um, because there was not anything that you were connecting by way of relevance. With all due respect, Your Honor, a lot of the questions I ask are. are objected to it seemed like i can't even get to the questions that need to be answered sir many of your questions go to these sovereign ideas that are frivolous arguments about the plaintiff and all of that we give you a little bit of leeway i give you a little bit of leeway on it um but to ask about a claim because frankly it's a vague question and many of these uh victims may in fact have made a claim with crime victim compensation. Um, and so I think that's potentially relevant, um, but uh, you may be asking it for a different purpose. I'm allowing it probably for a different purpose than you're anticipating, but the questions about the state and the plaintiff, other than when you talk about and you ask questions about their, who subpoenaed them, have they reviewed, uh, anything in preparation for their testimony, those are all fair game. But other questions are not, and that's why there's an objection, and that's why I rule the way that I do. So ask relevant questions, they'll be answered. What, so what? I don't see any need for this witness to be brought back in. I don't believe that witness was on Mr. Brooks's list, so that witness is excused. Um, who's the next witness? With all respect, on the record, Your Honor. Uh, um, I've asked a question of the state. Let them answer, please. Will, will I be able Mr. Brooks, to let them answer. Hold on. So the next witness uh, that we had intended on calling is Detective uh, Mike Carpenter with the Waukesha Police Department, who would provide testimony about his conducting the speed analysis of the vehicle. I don't expect that we'd be able to get through direct. Um, well, we might be able to get through direct. I'd but, like to uh, at least have him start. I want to go closer to the lunch hour uh, today. So the other issue is that we thought we were going to be breaking for lunch, so he's not in the building right now. We have another witness who is ready, who we could call out of order, um, but that would be moving into a new topic, a new group along the parade route. Um, so we're, we're fine with whatever the court wants to do. I'd like to keep going, so I'll defer to you on which witness to call. Let's call this. Your Honor, I would just note, I, I don't believe I asked for it. Maybe I did. Uh, Jeff Rogers, I know he has remained in the courtroom. He is a victim. Um, is he excused from his subpoena? He was not an individual who is um, who we were provided a subpoena for by Mr. Brooks. He's excused. Thank you. All right, we'll bring the jury back out, and you may call. Quickly, Mr. Brooks. Um, you, you made reference to... Uh, questions I asked him being you said something to the effect of sovereign things I, I don't understand what you mean by that um, I, I have no anticipation on your rulings I, I, I'm not trying to sit here and and I got enough work to do on the fly I, I'm definitely not trying to sit here and trying to anticipate what will be ejected to what will be ruled, ruled on in any way um, I'm merely just it was understood that this this would be a whole new thing for me to do um, I apologize if I'm not as polished as I should be working on three days time before a trial um, we see all the work that I have that I haven't even gone through Mr. Brooks the jury's coming back in there are relevant questions as the jury deserves Brooks, to know. Please. 
The jury deserves to know who the plaintiff is in this matter. I think it's fair to them if they're to make an informed and intelligent decision, they should know who the plaintiff is. So your objections noted for the record. Will you find any fact on that ruling, Your Honor? Or is that a judicial determination, Your Honor? Thank you, everyone. Please be seated. All right, the state may call its next witness, please. The state calls Alyssa Gajewski. All right. First thing I will ask you to do is to state your first and last names for the record and then spell each. Alyssa Gajewski, A-L-Y-S-S-A-G-A-J-E-W-S-K-I. Thank you. Go ahead, your witness. Thank you. Ms. Gajewski, how old are you? 23. Do you have any familiarity with a group called the Extreme Dance Group? Yes. How do you know that group? Um, I used to coach there. How long were you a coach for the Extreme Dance Group? About four years. Can you tell us the time frame where that took place? Yeah, so probably around 2018 to early 2022. Where, where the, where's that uh, dance group headquartered? Where do you hold your practices? Um, it was at, it's 404 Travis Lane. I don't know if that, I don't know Waukesha, so I don't know what road it's off of. Okay, but it's in Waukesha? Yes. All right. And uh, in general, what, what cities or municipalities did the dancers come from? Um, Waukesha. What were the approximate age ranges of the girls that you instructed at Extreme? Just myself. The, the girls who were dancers, how old were they? Um, so we started at Itty Bitty, which was about two-ish, and then my team was the oldest, so we went up to eighth grade. What, what do you call your team? So my team was called the Elite Team. And what's the approximate age range of those girls? Six to eight, eighth grade. And you mentioned itty bitty was about two, right? About two to three. Are there any groups say. between those? Um, yeah, so it's itty bitty, and then the tiny group, and then the mini group, and then the juniors, and then the elite. <coughs> and it's a continuum of age from itty bitty all the way up to the elite? Yes. I want to direct your attention to Sunday afternoon, November 21st of 2021. Was your group, the Extreme Dance Group, marching in the Waukesha Christmas Parade that day? Yes. And were you present with the group? Yes. Were there any other instructors or coaches there? Yeah, there was just one other. And who was that? Jamie Sutton. Do you remember approximately how many uh, from your dance group were present? I had about 12. Jamie might have had around 10. Minnie's was around four, maybe. Tiny's four and itty bitties. I'm not sure because they were just in like strollers and stuff with their parents. When you marched in the parade, were you in a specific formation? Yes, we were. And how were the different age groups organized in that formation? So um, at the front, it would start oldest and then it would go to youngest. So it would be elite, juniors, minis tiny and then the itty bitties with their parents okay Does, was there a, a vehicle or a float associated with your group in the parade yeah there was a truck what kind of truck uh it was pickup truck yes it yeah okay. yeah what's the objection um for answer my stand uh, i'll instruct the state to avoid leading questions uh, about how many times did you make it through your routine during that parade um, I don't I don't recall was there a certain point when your dancers stopped dancing overruled you may answer um, yeah they did stop dancing why because um, there was a car that drove through I'm now going to ask that we project onto the screen for the witness only Exhibit number 33. Let me know when you see uh, the screen in front of you. I see it. Okay. I'm going to ask you to just take as much time as you need, read all those names, 
and then uh, describe for me what we're looking at. Um, it's the formation that the girls were in. On the day of the parade? Yes. And does that accurately represent where each of those girls were in formation? Yes. And you've reviewed a diagram similar to this before your testimony, right? Yes. Uh, I would move Exhibit 33 into evidence and ask for permission to publish. Before I allow that, um, if you could ask her about the non-label boxes. Sure. Uh, you can see that there are some boxes on this diagram that don't have names in them, is that right? Correct. What do those boxes represent? Um, who wasn't injured. So, but those are people? Those are oh, yes. members of the dance group? Yes. Um, but to your knowledge, a box without a name is a person who wasn't hit. Yes. Uh, I'll renew my request at this point. Objection. Um, how, how is it legal to instruct the prosecution to ask a question that they should already know to ask? Um, your objection is noted. It's overruled. Exhibit 33 is received and permission to publish is granted. Okay. Can you... Uh, Ms. Kajewski, can you explain for us what the colors mean in this exhibit? Um, so they're each different team. So the yellow is the elite team, the green is the junior team, and the blue is the mini team. And there is two teams behind that, but they didn't have a formation. And that's why only these three are on here. Okay. You testified earlier that you were marching in order of age, so the elites were in the front of the group, right? Yes. So the parade route, if we, if we were moving forward, it would be the bottom of this page, is that right? Yeah. Okay. Can we project for the witness only exhibit number 32, please? Go ahead. Do you recognize this video? Um, not this video. Okay. Um, do you recognize the truck at yes. this point that mm -hmm. we stopped at? Yeah. At 19 seconds? Yeah. What that's, is, what's the truck? That's the truck that we had um, for Extreme. During the Christmas parade? Yes. Did you recognize uh, the people in front of the truck holding the banner? Objection. Um, the witness stated she doesn't recognize the video. How is it permitted? Your objections don't, it's overruled. She didn't answer the question. Yes. Let's play a few more seconds just for the witness. Did you recognize uh, the people coming into the screen from the left? Yes. Who are they? Um, our dancers. Does this video appear to be an accurate depiction of your group along the parade route on during the Waukesha Christmas Parade? Yeah. You may answer. Yes. I'm sorry, Your Honor. Did you sustain that objection? I didn't rule on it. Which objection? That I just objected to. Um, it was overruled. Are you making that decision now? Um, there's been a request by the state to receive Exhibit 32, Mr. Burke. I objected. All right, then your objections noted. It's overruled. Exhibit, it, exhibit 32 is received. Uh, the foundation has been laid and permission to publish is granted. On what grounds, Your Honor? The record speaks for itself. On what grounds, Your Honor? You may play. Skajewski, do you remember what you were wearing on your head, if, if anything at all, that day? Yeah, I had a bright red hat on. Do you see yourself in this, uh, at the 35 second mark of this video? Yes. Can you, that's a touch screen in front of you. Can you use your finger and circle yourself? Okay. And we'll resume at the 35 second mark. <laughs> and we can take that down now. Thank you. So, Ms. Kajewski, as well, let me just clarify. Uh, what did we see at the end of that video? Um, you, can take, you can take some time. A car going. Uh, through the parade. Is that the same vehicle that you remember seeing that day? Yes. Do you recall where you were standing at the point that the vehicle started to go through your girls in relation to the rest of the group? 
Um, yeah, in relation to the rest of the group, um, I was on the side um, that was with all the names, but I don't remember like what stores I was by. If, if you were standing in the middle of your group, were you on the left side or the right side? Which way are you looking? If you're walking down the parade route. I'm looking towards the truck. Yep. I would be on the left side. And you were towards the front? Yes. By the elite girls? Yes. Okay. After having watched that video just now in court, <coughs> um, does it appear as though that diagram with the names that we looked at, Exhibit 33, does it appear as though that diagram was an accurate depiction of where the named girls were positioned at the time the SUV came into the group? Yes. I'm sorry, what's the objection? Here, sir. Overruled. Okay. So the now, answer. Yes. Please the end. Okay. So now we'll put up Exhibit 34 for the witness, please. Now do you recognize the video? Yeah. What does it show? Um, the car going through and someone flying. Is that an accurate depiction of the scene as you saw it that day? Mm-hmm. You're saying she already stated she didn't recognize the video. Um, this characterizes her testimony. Your objection is overruled. It is not hearsay. Um, you may answer. <clears throat> And if you did answer, if you just repeat it. Could you... Is that, an, is that video an accurate depiction of the scene as you saw it unfold that day? Yes. Your answer may stand. Thank you. What was the answer? Yes. Oh my God! There's a figure on the bottom, on the left side of the screen, appears to be wearing black with long hair. You recognize that person? Yes. Okay. Can you see any features? Mr. Bucks, that's argumentative. Your objection is noted. It's overruled. You may answer. Hearsay. Objection. Not hearsay. hearsay. You may answer. Clear hearsay. You may answer. Yes. Who is that person we're looking at? Jessalyn. Ms. Kajuski, when you say Jessalyn, are you referring to Jessalyn Torres? Yes. She was a member of your dance group? Yes, she was on the junior team. We can take that down. I'm going to ask that we play uh, Exhibit 35 just for the witness. Do you recognize that video? Yes. What does it show? Um, the car going through through your dance group? Yes. Is that an accurate video depicting the events that day? Yes. Move exhibit 35 into evidence and request permission to publish. Okay. Exhibit 35 is received permission to publish. Granted, your objection is noted for the record. Again, this is eight seconds long. We're gonna turn the audio on for this video. Is the video who who even took the video? Is it resident? Is it relevant? Sir, so you're. It's not a objection. It's a statement. Um, we can ask questions later. We missed that too. Go ahead. So, Judge, before we begin, I have to step in here and request that Mr. Brooks be instructed to stop making comments under his breath. This witness is very clearly having an emotional and difficult time testifying, and she doesn't need to hear that. Objection. She can't hear anything I'm saying. Mr. Brooks, the mics are very good in this courtroom, so please okay. refrain. All right, keep going. Thank you. I just want to say one thing. To the extent that there are comments on this video, those comments are not being offered. I would instruct the jury to disregard those in terms of the evidence it's the video that's important so let's start with the first person on the top right vivian urell you knew vivian urell before november 21st right yes and do you recall 
seeing her uh, either while the SUV was driving through or after? Um, it's not hearsay. Overruled. I saw her after, uh, not during, because I was in the front. Can you describe the circumstances when you saw her after? Hearsay. Mr. Brooks, I'm going to direct your attention to review section 908.01. You have a statute book. Please do that. It's not hearsay. Yeah, she was on the opposite side of the road, uh, just like in a fetal position. Did you have any interaction with her? Yeah, I did. Um, I went uh, in a squad car with her to the hospital. Which hospital? Um, I think it's called Waukesha Memorial. Here in Waukesha? Yeah. Okay. And did you observe uh, any injuries to her? Yeah, she um, had road rash on her chin. Okay. I uh, next want to ask you about Mackenzie Hollingsworth, the first top right green square there. Did you see her as the SUV was coming through? I didn't see her as the SUV. I what? saw her at the hospital. Waukesha Memorial? Mm -hmm. Can you describe? How she looked at the hospital? Um, yeah, she was laying on the ground and her mom was on her left side of her and I was on her right and I was holding her hand trying to get her to squeeze my hand so she could like stay awake but she was going in and out of consciousness. She would, she was asleep and then she would wake up sobbing and it would just repeat. I next want to ask you about Alice Urell, so the next green square mm -hmm. down on that diagram. Did you see her as the SUV drove through? Um, I didn't see like her get hit because it was just a blur, but I saw her body on the ground right after, and she's the one that um, I, the first person I saw. Did you have any interaction with her after the fact? Yeah, I I picked her up as soon as her body was right in front of me. I just picked her up because I didn't know what was about to happen. What did you think had happened at that point? I didn't know. I didn't know if there was going to be just a bunch of cars. So I just wanted to get her out of the way. You've already testified about Jessalyn Torres. The Jessalyn Torres who's named in a green square there, is that the same Jessalyn Torres uh, that you referenced when we watched Exhibit 34? Yes. Okay. Moving down the diagram, uh, I'll ask you about Yuresi Becerra Montes. You recognize that name? Yes. Did you see Yuresi as the SUV came through the group? I saw her after. Where did you see her? Um, behind the truck on the ground. Which truck? <clears throat> the same truck that was driving in front of all the girls. That black pickup truck? Yeah. How close to the truck was she? Um, at the tailgate. Was anybody else with her? Yeah, her. Um, I remember seeing her dad and her sister. How did she appear to you in that moment? health-wise. Just in shock. Moving down the list to Julie Schlickow. Julia Schlickow, <laughs> excuse me. Did you see Julia as the SUV was driving through the group? I didn't see her as the SUV came through. I saw her at the hospital. At Waukesha Memorial? Yes. How did she appear to you when you saw her at Waukesha Memorial? <laughs> she wasn't good. Can you Take a little bit of time and then tell us in a little bit more detail. I was with Kenzie at the time and at Waukesha Memorial there's a glass like wall window and I saw Julia in a wheelchair uh, by herself with like nurses around her and she was kind of slunched over. She was in and out of consciousness as well and so I ran over to her and told them her name and um, they 
they rushed her in the back because she was not doing well. Um, and then when we got to the back, uh, she she started seizing and, and vomiting. And you saw this while you were with Kenzie, as you said? I saw Julia when I was with Kenzie, and then I left and went with Julia, and then we went in the back to a room, and that's when um, she started seizing and puking. And just so we can keep the name straight, who's Kenzie? Um, Mackenzie Hollingsworth. So moving further down the diagram, towards the front, Sam Coelho, mm -hmm. you recognize that name? Yes. Did you see Sam as the SUV went through the group? I didn't see uh, her with the SUV. What about afterwards? I didn't see her at the hospital either that night. Do you remember providing a, a written statement with Detective Mandy Schwartz from the Waukesha Sheriff's Department shortly after this incident? Yes. I would ask that we project that statement for the witness only. Ms. Kuchuski, do you see the screen in front of you? Yes. Uh, let's scroll down a little further. All right, just to yourself silently, I'd like you to read uh, from where it says, saw another to the words, so fast. Just read that silently. Let me know when you're done. I'm done. Okay. Do you, do you remember now? Um, talking about what happened to Sam? I didn't see Sam. I only saw her dad. Okay. And you didn't see her in the hospital afterwards? Not that night, no. Did you see her uh, in the days following this incident? Overruled. Um, um, yeah, as soon as the day she was able to have a visitor, I was there. When you say visitor, what do you mean? Where was she? Overruled. She was at Children's. Children's Hospital? Yeah. Do you know why she was there? Um, they moved her there just due to her injuries. And you know she was injured as a result of what? Um, um, overruled, she may answer what, as to what her knowledge of the injuries were. Yeah, she was there because um, she was struck. So Ms. Kajewski, there's uh, two remaining names there on the diagram, Isabella Bartels and Maddie Hollingsworth. Did you see either of them as the SUV went through the, the group? I did not. Did you see either of them in the immediate aftermath? I did not. Based on their position in that diagram and your review of the video evidence here in court, uh, how would you describe their position in relation to the red SUV that went through the, the group? Um, if you're looking at the SUV, they were just to the left of it. Okay. Do you know whether they were actually struck by the SUV? I do not. But based on their positioning, they would have been how close to the SUV, in your best estimate? Just a couple feet. You're not able to give an accurate estimate about how fast the SUV was traveling at that point, is that right? I could. Okay. Well, please, um, if you think you can, please tell us how fast do you think it was traveling. I thought around 55. The black truck that was part of your group, right? That was about the approximate speed of the rest of the parade? Yeah. And was the red SUV traveling faster than the black truck? Yes. Okay. Uh, that's all I have for direct examination on it. All right, then we'll break for lunch. We'll continue with cross-examination after the uh, lunch hour. Um, please rise for the jury. Mr. Brooks, I referenced this earlier, uh, but you have a statute book, section 908.01 uh, is the start of the statutes that deal with hearsay. It provides a definition of what it is. It goes through statements which are not hearsay. And it has a whole host of exceptions that are referenced uh, in 908.03. So um, I just direct your attention to that because many of your hearsay objections, they're not hearsay at all, sir. 
and I hope you're not just saying them just to interpose an objection, uh, but I think it would be very helpful if you were to familiarize yourself uh, with that. Uh, how, for the record, Your Honor, how do I know that, that the prosecution isn't objecting to in, anything based on the same assumptions? I don't understand uh, what you're saying. A, a lot you of times. You have that statute book, so if you'd like to read the hearsay statute, start with 908. Uh, 01, continue with 90802, the rule, and 90803 are all the exceptions. Continues with 90804. I realize you are not uh, a lawyer, Mr. Brooks, but you still should have a good faith basis to make the objection and then not argue with me when I rule on the objection. All right? The state will give. It's one word or a statement. Um, if it's self-evident to the court, I don't need the parties to even say much at all. Um, but that's primarily why your objections based on hearsay. There was one I sustained because it was in fact calling for hearsay. Um, a few when a witness the, a few has of those knowledge, hold on. When a witness, the witness is not asked to say what another person has said. Assuming there's no exception that applies or it's just not hearsay under the rule and they have otherwise personal knowledge about something They can provide that answer So I'm hoping that's a helpful to you as you formulate your objections. Of course, I'll keep ruling on them um, I just ask that when I rule on them You not interpose the same objection before the witness has answered when I say it's overruled person may answer your objection stands it's noted it doesn't need to be said again I'm now informed uh, I just I don't understand how um, someone can testify to things being told in the hospital that they're, they're not a family member a parent or anything so how would they know what injuries someone would have how would that information be disclosed to someone without being a parent or a direct relative that would be hearsay sir again people can testify based on personal knowledge what's hearsay is when it comes into court and they say so and so told me if they say i was told or again i think you're confusing personal knowledge with hearsay so you can question people on how they knew that information but you do that at your peril because if you open the door for them to tell you how they know then uh, then potentially hearsay is going to come in so with that i just wanted to give you that information um, i can't obviously further explain to you sir other than to say ignorance of the law is not something you can use as a valid uh, kind of defense or uh, you keep saying I don't understand. I don't. Um, you did this of your own free will. You waived your right to an attorney, and the <laughs> ignorance that you claim is not valid at this point, sir. So I, I also with that, altered that contract, Your Honor. You accepted the contract in the, in the way that I sent it back to you. Now let's sir, let's we be don't fair. Have a contract together. The contract was not. being You're misapplied right. in this circumstance. All right, we are in recess. I'll see everyone. Uh, let's be back at uh, one thirty. Thank you, everyone. All right, we will, we'll go back on the record then in State versus Brooks. Appearances are as they were this morning. Um, do we have Ms. Gajewski available? Right All right, bring her in and we'll bring the jury in as soon as she's up here for her cross exam. State that I do consent to that name, nor do I know any individual by that name. What is her name? Bruce. All right, Ms. Kajewski, if you would please make your way back to the witness stand. And as soon as you are there, I will have the jury brought out. All right, go ahead. On the record, before the jury comes out, um, I would like to direct Your Honor to a case, United States versus Cotton, 535. Mr. Brooks? If you have a motion, you need to put it in writing, and then I will address it. I'm not going to deal with any oral motions right now. So if you're asking me to reconsider something, you need to follow the proper procedure. 
What is the proper procedure, Your Honor? I've told you repeatedly what a motion is. So if it's a reconsideration, 806.07 is the statute I would direct your attention to. It's not a reconsideration. It's just bringing up the subject matter of jurisdiction again. Sir, I've already dealt with this repeatedly. So any further times you want me to address it, you need to put it in writing for the court to consider a proper motion with the relief that you're requesting, the legal basis, and the facts upon which you are relying. I have that here, Your Honor. Not just simply a case. I want a motion. I've put in several motions that have yet to be answered. Sir, I've already addressed them. The jury's on its way out. I'm not going to delay the start of this cross-examination for this argument yet again. It's not an argument. I've already addressed it. The fact that it's the afternoon doesn't mean I need to address it again. The jury's coming out. It's going to continue to be brought up. It's going to continue to be brought up, Your Honor. It hasn't been proven that you have jurisdiction, that this court has jurisdiction. I think it's relevant. Subject matter of jurisdiction can't be forfeited or waived. You know that. By not answering, Your Honor. Please, the jury's coming out. By not answering, Your Honor, you're agreeing to a tactic agreement. Is that a judicial determination that you don't have to answer? I'll take that as a yes. Thank you, everyone. Please be seated. All right, Mr. Brooks, you may question the witness if you have any questions for her. I don't consent to being called that name. What's your name? Brooks. Is that noted for the record, Your Honor? Ask your questions, please. Is it noted for the record, Your Honor? As you testified to earlier, you were present at the Christmas parade on November 21st of 2021. Would that be fair to say? Yes. Do you remember about how long you intended to be at the parade? Just until we finished the route. It was a few exhibits that you stated on record that you weren't familiar with seeing. Would that be fair to say? Once clarified, I did say that. I remembered seeing them. So you saw those videos before today? Yes. About how many times do you recall seeing them before today? Just once. Do you recall who showed them to you? Yes. You stated for the record and for the jury? Yeah, the state. And who would you be referring to when you say the state? The three seated next to you. Are you referring to the opposite table next to me? Yes. Let the record reflect that. She identified the three prosecutors sitting at the prosecution table. No objection. The record will so reflect. Do you recall knowing if you would possibly be called to testify? Yes. Were you expecting to testify? Yes, I got a letter in the mail. Do you recall if that letter was a subpoena? Yes, it was a subpoena. You frequently refer to the vehicle as the car, the car. Do you recall those statements? Yes. So for clarification, what type of vehicle did you see that day? Was it a car? It was a Ford SUV. And how were you able to determine the make and model of the vehicle? Objection. Not describe the model. Rounds. Overruled. She may answer the question. So when I first saw it, I made a point to figure out what car it was, not the license plate. And I knew it was either either that an escape or a Mercury. And then as the vehicle got closer to me, I saw the Ford emblem. That's how I knew it was a Ford. And during those determinations of the make and model of the vehicle, did you catch a description of the driver? No, I did not. Any reason why you would be more focused on the make and model of the vehicle instead of who was driving the vehicle? I can't tell you why. I just made sure I knew what the vehicle was. And you didn't try to see if you can spot a license plate at any time? 
It all happened way too fast. So would it be fair to say that it happened fast enough for you to not be able to make uh, make out the model and make of the vehicle? No, I knew exactly what it was. But not exactly who was driving the vehicle? No, I did not look who was driving it, just the make. You stated that you observed uh, some girls from your dance team in the hospital. Would that be fair to say? Yes. And you stated that a few of them were laying on the ground? Yes. Any any idea why they be, would be laying on the ground in the hospital? Because there was so many people, there wasn't enough room. So people were standing, sitting, and laying on the ground because the rooms were overflowed. Were they being attended to at that time? Nope, because there was uh, too many people. Did you recall feeling like maybe they should have been attended to, seeing as how they may have been seriously injured? The nurses were attending to who needed it. Um, immediately, the nurses were doing the best they could. So it would be fair to say that the girls that you observed on the ground weren't of immediate concern to the nurses at that time? At that time, they weren't. Were you injured in any way during this incident? I was not. And you testified earlier to uh, the approximate speed of the vehicle. Do, do you recall what your answer was? Yeah, about 55 miles per hour. And how were you able to come to that determination? Because um, I've drove for a couple of years now and that's just the number that came to my head. Because when I drive, I know what 55 feels like and I know what 25 feels like and that was just my best guess. So it would be fair to say that you were making an assumption. You didn't know for sure. Nope. Yeah, that was just my best guess. You made a reference to a young woman by the name of Sam. Would that be fair to say? Yes. And what relation do you have to Sam? Is she just part of the dance group or close friend? Or? Um, yeah, she's part of the dance group, but I became super close with her ever since I started working there. Do you recall seeing her struck by the vehicle? No. Do you remember where she was at the time that you saw the vehicle? Has she? Yes, she was um, on the front left side. If you're looking towards the truck that was in our group, she was on the left side in front, first girl. Would it be fair to say that from that angle that you would be able to see her if she was struck? I was turned the other way. She was behind my back. So you don't know for sure where she was at when the vehicle passed you? I do. She was in her formation that I had put her in. Do you know if anyone was uh, standing there or in that position with her at that time? She has her own spot and um, there was girls behind her and next to her, but she would have been the only dancer in her spot. So it would have been people in her general area, but not directly next to her? Yeah, they have space in between all of them. Do you remember what you did immediately after the vehicle passed you? Yep, I ran to Alice and I picked her up immediately. In regards to your dance team, did you observe anyone struck? I just remember seeing um, bodies in the air, but I can't say I remember seeing a vehicle hit them. I remember seeing bodies in the air and on the ground. So. At that point, it would be fair to say that you didn't know if the people that were on the ground or in the air or whatnot were in fact struck by a vehicle. Well, I did know it was the vehicle because I turned around and I saw the vehicle coming towards them. And then I think I blacked out until they actually were in the air and on the ground. By blacked out, what do you mean by that? State that what that means for the jury and for the record. So, I can't see anything, but I can hear it. So, when I say blackout, I mean I can't visualize it, but I can hear it happening. Was that the first time that you ever had a blackout? Yeah. So, it's never happened before that day? Never. Any idea what caused it on that occasion? No. Stress. Shock. And you stated that you um, got into a... Uh, ambulance and with someone who was struck and then left the parade at that point? 
A squad car, yes. Oh, I'm sorry. A, a squad. Mm -hmm. You left at that point. Yeah. Do you recall about what time that was? No. Do you recall how long you were uh, with the person being transported at that time? Um, no, I wasn't worried about time. Do you recall if anyone was walking directly next to you at the time of the incident? Um, I was walking next to the girls on my team that got struck. Do you recall walking next to Sam or Sam walking next to you? No, she was um, behind me. Do you recall making the statement that, and this is, I'm guessing, in a summary report given to uh, Detective Schwartz. Do you recall being interviewed by Detective Schwartz? Mm -hmm. Yes. Do you recall making the statement that Samantha was walking next to you? Uh, no, I don't recall that. Do you recall making a statement that you did not have enough time to tell Sam to move? Yes. And this was the same Sam that you just testified that you did not see sh struck, correct? Yeah. Yes, I didn't see her hit. So it would be fair to say that you made the statement that you didn't have enough time to tell her to move, but didn't actually see what happened to her. Because she was on the same side as me, and that's why I was saying I didn't have enough time to tell her to move, but I wasn't next to her. Any idea what may have stopped you from being able to see what happened? Because I blacked out. At the point that you blacked out, at that point you didn't see anyone struck. Would that be fair to say? I don't remember exactly the vehicle hitting, but I just remember bodies flying. I think I kind of tried to block it out. Do you recall making a statement that everything happened so fast? Yes. But not fast enough for you to identify the, the vehicle? No, I remember exactly what the vehicle was. Do you recall if the vehicle had any damage at that point? I was only um, paying attention to what kind of make it was because I could see the body of it was an SUV. And like I said, I thought it was either the make with the Mercury or a Ford. And so I was just paying attention to the emblem when the grill got closer and I saw it was a fort. I wasn't looking for any damage. About how close would you estimate the vehicle came to you? I don't know. Did it get close to you? I don't know. I blacked out. Do you remember what side of the road you were on when you blacked out? If you are looking at the truck, I was on the left side. So if you're going walking in the parade, I was on the left side. But I had turned around, and so I was on the right side because I was looking at the vehicle. So at what point did your memory go fuzzy? Um, so I turned around, and I saw a car, or an SUV, and I told myself, you're crazy, you know, you don't see that, and then all of a sudden, I don't remember anything. I can hear, I can hear it. And then after, I remember seeing the bodies. So I would say I blacked out from when I saw the vehicle to after it passed. Any idea how long that may have been roughly, if you recall? A second. So pretty much like the snap of a finger. Yeah, because it went by so fast. And from your recollection, that was quick enough for you to miss anybody being struck. I blacked out, so I didn't see them physically get hit. Outside of a Detective Shorts, um, did you, uh, were you interviewed by any other law enforcement? No, I only gave that statement, and that was it. Uh, what about at the hospital? Were you interviewed at the hospital? No, I was not. Uh, did you call yourself to make a report about what you saw that, that evening? No, I uh, went and gave the statement right after I left the hospital, and that was it. Um, did you do any follow-up to see if your report, report was received by anyone in law enforcement? No. Did anybody from law enforcement contact you about the statement that you gave? No. Do you recall at any time reading or seeing a complaint in this matter? No. Do you recall at any time filing any claim in this matter? No. Are you saying with the police department? 
Yes, with the police. Yeah, no, I just gave a statement and that was it. Would you consider yourself a party to this matter? Objection. Grounds. Sustained. Do you recall if you were contacted by the plaintiff in this matter? Objection. Grounds. Relevance. Grounds. Um, overall, she may answer. Can you um, say who the plaintiff is? I'm asking you, do, are you aware of the plaintiff? Were you contacted by the plaintiff at, at any time? I don't know um, what the plaintiff is. The plaintiff would be wh whoever is bringing the claim for the charges in the matter. So not, um, then yeah. Yeah, yeah, what, you you were contacted by the plaintiff? Objection. She answered yes. I'll answer grounds. Objection, hold on. Objection, move to strike. Grounds. Legal analysis. Grounds. And the defendant is testifying. <coughs> um, I'll sustain the objection. I'll grant the request to strike uh, the question and the answer for the reasons given by the state. Um, you may rephrase if you'd like. Who were you contacted about testifying? Um, the state. And that, I'm assuming the state of Wisconsin, correct? Um, I just know them as the state right there. Right there as in referring to the prosecution table? Correct. Let the record show that she identified the state as the three Attorneys at the prosecution table. Record will still reflect. And do you recall having a conversation with the state? Yes. Would it be fair to say that you would identify the state as the plaintiff in this matter? Objection. Grounds. Sustained. Have you ever had any interactions with the plaintiff in this matter? Objection. Grounds. Grounds. Sustained. Do you see the plaintiff in the courtroom today? Same objection. Grounds. Sustained. Do you even know if there is a plaintiff? Same objection. Grounds. Sustained. So as far as you know, in your opinion, who would you say is the plaintiff in this matter? Objection. Grounds. Sustained. Were you present at the parade with any family that day? No. Mm, just one second. And when you visited the hospital, how did you learn of the injuries to any of your uh, dance team partners? Um, which hospital are you referring to? Um, I only heard you say Memorial. You might have said too. I think you said Children's one time too. Would that be fair to say? Yeah, that's correct. Um, um, I guess I would be referring to Memorial. Um, so the only injury... Um, not even injury. I only knew um, Julia had something wrong with her brain at the time because they saw spinal fluid coming out of her nose. And were you told that directly from a doctor? I heard them um, freaking out and rushing her to a CT scan because I was right next to her um, helping them as she seized and vomited. So you overheard with from the nurses what the diagnosis was? Yes. What about for um, Sam? Are you referring to the night of? Yes, uh, when, uh, I'm guessing you saw her at some point that, that night. I did not see her that night. Uh, did you see her at any point? I did. Um, I was there at the hospital the first day she was able to have a visitor. And. Were you told directly by uh, medical professionals at that time that you were able to see her of any possible injuries? I wasn't told by them. Um, she actually called me. Can I strike that answer for hearsay, Your Honor? No, you asked the question. But the answer was hearsay. But you asked the question. In the days after the incident, um, did you have quite a few uh, interactions with the dance team? Yeah, we um, tried to keep ourselves busy and we did a lot of things together. Did you, uh, did you attend any visuals or any memorials or anything like that? Yes, I did. 
And would you stay for the record and for the jury how many? Um, I believe it was on Monday I went to that vigil. And that would be the only one that you attended? Yeah, that was the only one they had. Were you aware of uh, um, things set up uh, financially for the victims? Can you repeat that? Were you aware of any, any uh, for example, like GoFundMes or or uh, donations or anything for the victims? Were you aware of anything like that going on in the days after the incident? Grounds. <laughs> Grounds. Sustained. Did you yourself uh, donate to any causes associated with the incident? I did not. Are you still currently uh, a member of the dance team? Can you um, tell me which one you're referring to? Um, the what is it, stream dance team? Yeah, I'm um, not. I do not work there anymore. And was that decision made by the incident or was it just a personal decision? Objection. Grounds? Sustained. You testified earlier to uh, having the blackout and that being the first time that that happened. Would that be fair to say? Yes. Have you had any blackouts any time since that day? No. First and only time would be that day. Correct. No further questions. Can you read your back? Yes, thank you. Ms. Kajewski, with respect to that blackout, uh, you testified that you don't have a visual memory mm -hmm. of the SUV actually striking any girls that day. Is that right? Correct. You testified, however, that you remember what it sounded like. Mm -hmm. Describe that. Yes, sorry. Um, yes, so mm -hmm. it sounded like... Um, those big orange construction cones just being hit. That's what I remember it as. You do have a visual memory of the immediate aftermath of the strike? I do. And, and what is that memory? Yes. Here's that. You may answer. It's overall. Um, just pure chaos. Shoes everywhere, palms everywhere, bodies people screaming, running around, just chaos. When asked on cross-examination what caused your blast blackout, you said stress and shock. You remember giving that testimony? Yes. At any time in your life before November 21st of 2021, had you ever witnessed an SUV drive through a group of young women? Objection, no. hearsay. Overruled. Objection, relevancy. Overruled. You may answer. No. What about any time since November 21st, 2021? Objection. Relevancy. Overruled. No. That's all we have. Thank you. Thank you. You may step down. She may. Thank you. This day we'll next call James Sutton. Do you solemnly swear that the testimony you're about to give shall be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, so help you God? Yes. Thank you. Please have a seat. The first thing I would like you to do is to state your first and last names for the record and then spell each. First name, Janie Sutton, J-A-I-M-I-E, last name Sutton, S-U-T-T-O-N. Thank you. Go ahead, your witness. Thank you. Ms. Sutton, how old are you? I'm 23. Do you have an affiliate or have you ever had an affiliation with the Extreme Dance Group here in Waukesha? Yes, I worked there last year. How long did you work for Extreme? From May of 2021 to April of 2022. What was your role with the organization? I was a coach for the junior team. What's the approximate age range of the junior team? About 8 to 11 years old. How many people were part of that group, the junior group? 10. Okay. And did you participate with your dance team in the Waukesha Christmas Parade on November 21st of last year? Yes. You yourself were actually present for the parade? Yes. Did you attend as spectators or did you march in the parade? I marched in the parade. With your girls? Yes. Do you remember approaching the Five Points intersection? Yes. Do you remember what happened at that intersection? A car <coughs> drove along my left side. Do you see yourself on the screen? Yes. So that's a touch screen in front of you. Can you use your finger and circle yourself for us? 
Okay, so what, what's on your head? I have a gray hat on. Gotcha. Based on the video that we've seen so far in this exhibit, did it appear to you as though the girls were maintaining their uh, position in the group? Yes. Okay. Do we display for the witness exhibit number 33 and publish this as well, please? It's, I would like you, Ms. Sutton, to please take a few minutes or moments uh, and look at this exhibit, read all the names, let me know when you're done. Okay. The boxes with names in them, uh, are they accurately represented in this diagram based on where they were in the formation in real life? Yes. Okay. I now would like to play for the witness only, exhibit number 36, please. We're going to play from the beginning and we're going to turn the audio on. Your Honor, is the video playing at the right speed? My understanding, it will be. We'll double check for Mr. Brooks. Can we make sure that we've got it at 100%? Yep. It just wasn't at turned up. So that means when it was just showed, it wasn't playing at the right speed. I think I can just very simply clarify. To adjust the speed, you have to change it to see what it's set at. So it was at 100%, and it is now back at 100%. Thank you. <coughs> Object to that for the record. Clearly, it wasn't at the right speed. The record reflects the statement made by Attorney Wichow regarding the speed, and the court accepts that. Go ahead. And the objection. <laughs> If possible, if you can, I'd like you to identify some people in the frame for us, okay? Yes. Uh, how many people do you see laying on the ground, Ms. Sutton? I see one person laying on the ground in this frame. And can you circle them for us? Who is that? That is Vivian. What's her last name? You're all. At the moment that the SUV first made contact with your group, where were you in relation to the rest of the group? I was towards the back right side of the group. The right as house. in standing in the road and, and looking down the parade route? Yes. Okay. Based on your position in the road and your memory from that day, are you able to identify uh, anybody else who's depicted in the video at this point? Um, I believe that's Olivia Stover in the left. And what color is her hair? Brown. Could you please circle Olivia for us? Face. The objection is noted. 36B is received, and the annotation will be captured and preserved for the right. Ms. Sutton, can you walk us through your memory of what happened as the SUV began to go through your group? Yes, I was in the back right with some of our younger teams and was helping them get in their formation. And I heard some yelling behind me, some screaming, and I looked over my left shoulder. And just as I looked over my left shoulder, there was a red car that drove through. By the time I looked, it was already hitting our girls. What happened next? Um, girls that were not injured started to run over to the sidewalk. So I started to gather them all in one area. What happened next? Um, I tried to reunite those that I could with their parents. Those that I couldn't, I took with me and I heard there was an active shooter. So we went into Chef Pam's kitchen and hid out there until we were told it was all clear to go to our cars. Chef Pam's Kitchen is a, a business, a storefront on Main Street? Yes. Okay. What happened next? After that, I went to my car, went to the hospital, and did my police statements.
In the immediate aftermath after the SUV came through your group, did you at any point see a person named Charlotte Urell? Not that day. Okay. You know who Charlotte Urell is? Yes. Can you explain for us um, her relationship to the extreme dance group? Overrule the answer. She is the older sister of two of the Waukesha extreme dancers. Was she with your group in the parade? Yes, she was handing out candy. Okay. And uh, you said you didn't see Charlotte that day. When did you next see her? Well, I saw I saw her that day before the parade started, but I didn't see her in the aftermath. Okay. When did you see her af after the SUV went through the group? When's the next time you saw Charlotte Urell? <coughs> Weeks later at the dance studio. Okay. And did you make any observations of Charlotte at that time? She was on crutches. Do you know why she was on crutches? <coughs> She was hit by the car that during, drove through. During the parade? Yes. The red SUV we saw in the videos you watched? Yes. Okay. Uh, what about Grayson Urell? Do you know who that is? Yes. Who's that? He is the younger brother of two of the Waukesha Extreme Dancers. Did you see Grayson Urell marching with your group during the Christmas parade? Yes. Before the SUV came through the group? Yes. Did you see Grayson Urell at any point after the SUV came through? Not that day. When is the next time after the SUV came through your group that you saw Grayson? Um, weeks later when he was discharged from the hospital after being hit from the red SUV. Okay. And what personal observations did you make of Grayson at that time? Uh, he had a large cast on his arm. I believe he might have been in a wheelchair or crutches. Can you describe for us the uniform that you girls were wearing that day? They were wearing black leggings, black Waukesha Extreme jackets, white Santa hats with light up headbands attached to them, white light up gloves, and white pom poms. Could we please uh, display for the witness only exhibit number 102? 102. This is a red SUV that is smashed up. And there is a white light up headband on what used to be the side mirror. Do you recognize that white light up headband? Yes. What is it? Objection. Here it is. Overrule. That is one of the headbands that was over our girls' white sand hats. That's all I have. Thank you. All right. Any questions for this witness? <sighs> yeah. <sighs> Do you recall what time you arrived at the parade that evening? The parade started at 4, I believe I was there around 3.30. Um, did you come with anybody or? I came with Alyssa. Would it be fair to say that you guys are pretty close? Yes. Um, do you recall giving a statement to Detective Schwartz? I gave a statement to a deputy. I don't know their name. Do you recall at what time that was roughly after the incident? It was around 6.30 that night. Do you remember where you were when you gave the statement? It was at the Transit Center, the Waukesha Transit Center. And when did you first notice a vehicle approaching? Uh, I heard screaming and yelling behind me, and that was when I looked over my left shoulder. Do you recall how close the vehicle was to you at the time where you looked over your left shoulder? It was on the left side and I was on the far right. So it wasn't very close to me. Were you able to identify any driver of the vehicle? No. Would it be fair to say that you referred to it, the vehicle numerous times as car? Yes. Would it also be fair to say that you then identified it as an SUV? Yes. So what exactly did you see what type of vehicle did you actually see an SUV or a car it was an SUV any reason why you were referred to it as car I refer to all cars as just cars no matter what they are if it's a truck it's still a car would it be fair to say that certain vehicles look different than others absolutely at what point do you recall hearing uh, that, that there may have been an active shooter when I was gathering the girls who hadn't been hit <laughs> 
a man came up to me and said that there was an active shooter do you, amongst all of that. Do you recall if that was somebody marching in a parade or a spectator? Or? I'm not sure. Were they any law enforcement? No. Did you hear any shots? No. And where did you go from there after you were informed that there may be an active shooter? I went into Chef Pam's kitchen. Did you go in there alone or? No, people were piling in there and I had several girls with me, several dancers with me. Uh, you were shown a few videos. Uh, do you recall seeing those before today? Yes. How many times have you seen them before today? At least 10 times. So pretty frequently you've, you've seen them? Yes. Would it be fair to say that you uh, saw those numerous times to maybe bring back something you couldn't recall? Yes. You stay for the record and for the jury who showed you the, these uh, videos multiple times? They were sent to me. So that would be, were they sent via email or? Over text message. Text message. Yeah. And can you stay for the record and for the jury who they, the text messages were sent from? Alyssa. So they weren't sent by any law enforcement or? No. Um, to the best of your knowledge, can you recall how Alyssa was able to obtain the uh, vid the videos that you saw today? I'm not sure. So she never mentioned that to you in any way at any time? No. Were you able to identify the driver? No. Were you able to identify a license plate number? No. Were you injured during the incident in any way? No. Did you uh, go to the hospital after the event? Yes. Were you transported there or did you drive there yourself? Or? Um, my fiance drove me there. Do you recall how long you stayed at the hospital? Not long. I was told just to go get a police statement. So it would, be, it would be fair to say that you went to the hospital strictly for the police statement? Purposes? I went to the hospital to see if the girls that I had unaccounted for were at the hospital. And were you able to gain the information that you were seeking? Yes. So that would explain the, uh, the brief stay at the hospital? Yes. Did you learn any additional information at that point? Nope. Do you recall in the statement that you gave to the Detective Schwartz that you observed people running towards the sidewalk? Yes. Did you see anyone on the sidewalk struck by the vehicle? No. Do you recall stating that you were waiting inside of a building for what seemed like a long time? Yes. And what would you estimate time-wise, what time frame that would be. How I'm does just object here and ask a clarification about what building we're talking about? So say just to the form of the question, please rephrase. Well, from the report, it just says they needed to seek shelter inside of a building, so it doesn't it doesn't say uh, the name of the building in the report. I guess that's why I didn't refer to a sp specific name of the building. Just ask your question, Mr. Brooks. Please rephrase. How long were you? How long would you estimate you seek shelter? Probably around an hour. And did you immediately leave from that point? I made sure all of my girls were reunited with their parents and family members. And once they were all reunited, then I left. Do you recall giving a written statement? Yes. Do you recall who you gave the uh, written statement to? No. Do you recall in your written statement saying that it seemed as if something was wrong with the vehicle? Yes. And what would you, from your recollection, what would you say was wrong with the vehicle? It was going very fast. I thought maybe there was brake failure happening because it was going so fast. And what made you come to that conclusion? Because there was a car driving through a parade instead of slowly rolling through like the other vehicles. So it would be fair to say your initial thought was something was wrong with the vehicle? Yes. Did you see any smoking from the vehicle, any damage to the vehicle at that point? No. Did you observe where the vehicle went after it passed you? No. 
Did you see anyone struck after the vehicle passed you? Yes. But to the best of your recollection, you don't recall what the ve vehicle did after it passed you? Correct. Would you say it was uh, pretty loud that, that night? Yes. A pretty windy, cold? Yes. After you had been waiting in the, uh, the building for a while, who came and informed you guys that it was okay to leave at that point? Uh, it was police that came and told us we were clear to go. Was it one officer? A couple Just of one. Two of them? Just one. You don't recall their names by chance? No. At that point, did you ask the police officers for any information about the active shooter? No. About what time would you estimate that you left the parade? After I got the all clear. You, do you recall what time that was? I do not recall. Do you recall if the vehicle had any tinted windows? I do not recall. Were you close enough to the vehicle to make to make out the make and model of the vehicle? No. Do you recall any windows being down or anything like that? No. Do you recall anything being tossed from the vehicle? Uh, Falling out of the vehicle? No. So it just pretty much just moving straight? Yes. By how long would you approximate you watch the travel of the vehicle after it had passed you? I didn't watch the vehicle after it went past me. I was looking at the dancers on the ground. So it would be fair to say that once the vehicle passed you, you couldn't see if it struck anyone else at that point? Correct. No further questions. Can you read your mind? No, Your Honor. Thank you. Thank you. You may step down. Please call your next witness. State calls Detective Mike Carpenter. The testimony you're about to give shall be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, so help you back. I do. Thank you, sir. Please have a seat. First thing I will have you do is to state your first and last names for the record and spell each. Michael Carpenter, first name spelled M-I-C-H-A-E-L, last name spelled C-A-R-P-E-N-T-E-R. -E -E Thank you. Go ahead. Thank you. Detective, what do you do for a living? I'm a detective with the City of Waukesha Police Department. How long have you been a detective? I've been a detective for approximately 12 years. How long total in service with the Waukesha Police Department? Uh, approximately 20 years. Is that your first job, Waukesha Police Department? I worked a brief stint for about six months each at the Town of Brookfield Police Department part-time and the Town of Merton Lake Patrol part-time before moving on to the City of Waukesha. What is your current assignment as a detective? I'm in the Computer Forensics Unit. What type of things do you do in that unit? Analyze digital data, uh, digital video recorders, uh, cell phones, um, regular computers, pretty much anything that can hold digital media. Did you conduct a speed analysis in this case? Yes, I did. Can you walk us through, uh, when you set out to conduct a speed analysis, first of all, what is it, and how do you go about conducting that analysis? Basically, throughout a reviewing video for this incident, we wanted to determine if there was a way to get an accurate speed um, from the red SUV. Um, I've been through some training, um, certified as an input ACE examiner, that's a software we use, and we determined that there were cameras that existed along the parade route on West Main Street that may have held useful information. Specifically, we were looking for a surveillance video that was still in its native proprietary format uh, that would still hold that metadata that would let us conduct a speed analysis. I did locate uh, Bosco Social Club, which is a bar located at 260 West Main Street in the city of Waukesha that had a proprietary format that I believe that let us do that analysis. How many cameras were fixed to the Bosco's storefront? There were two, one on the southwest side of the building and one on the southeast, at least that we used. I believe they also have um, video inside and towards the rear of the establishment, but we were concerned with the cameras facing West Main Street. So once you get the surveillance video, what do you do with it? I viewed the video to determine if it would be suitable. Uh, the video was, in my opinion, pretty high quality. I could see the vehicle clearly traveling westbound on uh, West Main Street, so we believed that we'd be able to explore that further and try to conduct the analysis from that. 
So what did you do? Uh, the next step was we had to determine what an accurate frame rate was for the camera. Uh, most surveillance systems have what's called a variable frame rate. Um, in defining a frame, basically a video is a series of still images or frames put together to show motion. Um, however, that can vary from frame to frame. That timing may not be exactly the same. Uh, we went down to Bosco's and placed a device in front of each camera called a VFR light board that's uh, supplied and calibrated by the company Input Ace. We placed it in front of each camera and that board's got a series of flashing lights that have timing in them. Uh, recorded a video of that board from each camera and then returned uh, to my forensic lab and placed that into the Input Ace software and we were able to calculate the timing um, more accurately between each frame so we had a, had a more scientific approach to it. What did you do with that information? Once I had that information, um, let me back up. Prior to having that information, I had also asked uh, Specialist Plata of our Criminal Evidence Forensics Unit, our traditional forensics, to respond to the area of Bosco's and use the department's, uh, it's called FARO, F-A-R-O, their 3D laser crime scene um, mapping device. They map various points in front of Bosco's and we were able to basically find the orienta orientation, the position that the eastbound camera was facing. And then once that was done, we could take a screenshot of that 3D scan, which measures, my understanding is millions of points. Once I had that done, I was able to bring that into input a software to begin the overlay process where I could overlay the images on top of each other. So we, brought the screenshot of the 3D scan in, brought a partial video in of the red SUV traveling westbound, and began to compare points from the 3D scan and the video, and began to plot those points. For instance, a um, intersect, intersecting crack in the sidewalk. If I could see it in the 3D scan, I would plot that point and then match it up in the video. <coughs> Did that over a number of points, and then that enables us to lay the video identically on top of the 3D scan. Um, once that was complete, then that's where we started bringing in the light board video to find out the timing, uh, to find out how many milliseconds or seconds uh, passed in this in incident. In this particular video, I was concerned with uh, frames 35 through 60 um, of that vehicle traveling westbound. Once I obtained the timing from the VFR light board, I determined that with the assistance of the software that the average was 0.834 seconds had passed in those 25 frames that that vehicle, or I'm sorry, 26 frames that that vehicle continued to westbound. What that does, it then gives me a low end and a high end that it can use for a margin of error. So it said the longest time it would take for the vehicle to travel westbound through those 26 frames would be 0.838 seconds. And the quickest time that it could pass through those 26 frames would be 0 0.830 seconds. Once I had that information, I was able to completely overlay the video onto the 3D scan and I could start at frame 35 and it enables me to overlay it within the 3D scanning software and I was able to drop a small point. Uh, the clearest point of reference in, in this view is there were people around it and other things in the area I was able to pick the front passenger's wheel and drop a point directly in the center of that wheel, advance frame by frame until I was at frame 60, drop another point, and then I can use a slider to go back and forth to either have the vehicle present or just the 3D scanning. Uh, once I had just the 3D scanning, then I could take and measure the distance from that first point in frame 35 to the last point in frame 60. And then I was able to calculate that input that in with the uh, different measurements of you know, 0.838 seconds and the 0 0.830. When I did that within the software, it told me that the distance was 12.7477 meters. When I converted that to feet, I believe it was 80, I'm sorry, 41.8231 feet. That allowed me to compare that with the um, fastest that the vehicle could travel and the slowest that the vehicle could travel and with the margin of error, convert that to feet per second and then miles per hour, which came up with a measurement for those 26 frames, 
of 33.7 to 34.6 miles per hour in those particular frames. So you're basically measuring what? Walk us through the, the screen here. What are, you, what are you measuring? So as soon as the red SUV came into uh, view of the video traveling westbound, once I had a frame where there was no obstruction, I could see the full passenger side tire. That's where I dropped my first point, and then I let the video. Or, sorry, I let the uh, SUV continue westbound until I found another spot where there was no obstruction. Now, when I overlaid it between the 3D software and the video I have here, um, during this video, there's no foliage on the branches. During the 3D scan, there is foliage, so that blocked a little bit. So I had to stop a little earlier than what I wanted, but I was just basically measuring how far that SUV or that wheel traveled during those frames in that amount of time. Okay, so you're, you're measuring distance and time. Yes. And from that, you're calculating speed. Yes. And you've already talked about the, the different variables that you took into consideration, right? Yes. And that resulted in, what's your ultimate conclusion? 33.7 to 34.6 miles per hour. That's all I have, thank you. Thank you. Go ahead, cross. Uh, very, very briefly. You stated earlier that uh, in reference to traveling through frames that sometimes you may encounter problems with the estimation. Would that be fair to say? Uh, no, I don't believe that was my testimony. You testified to um, at one point or another that sometimes timing, exact timing of speed could be a little inaccurate. No, I don't, I don't believe that properly characterizes. What were you referring to at that? I was referring to that uh, digital video recording systems, surveillance systems, they use something that's called variable frame rate. I can't say that every single one does, but almost all of them do that um, from frame to frame, it could change by a millisecond, hundreds of milliseconds. Um, to do this the most accurate scientific way possible. That's why we conducted it the way we did with the variable frame rate board. So there can be sometimes miscalculations. Is that fair to say? I don't believe so in the way we performed it, no. Well, I was referring to the process in general, which you just stated that sometimes it can, by milliseconds, hundreds of milliseconds, a millisecond, that sometimes there can be miscalculation. I'm not sure I'm completely understanding the question. Are you asking in this uh, specific example or just in general? The, the process in general. Somebody conducting an analysis a completely different way, it's possible, but in uh, this analysis from my training experience is the most scientifically uh, possible way we can do it. Before this occasion, had you used the same method that you used for this occasion? Yes. How many times? I had not used it in a live case yet. This was our first chance to do this, but I uh, done it a number of times in our training examples. But the first time you've done it in a live case? Yes. Can you state for the jury what is the difference between a live case and any other case? Uh, there, there really is no difference. The uh, training examples are hands-on and the process we follow uh, through all those examples to establish competency is uh, exactly the same way we would do it for any other investigation. So, if they're pretty much the same, why is it a need for the title live if they're pretty much the same? It was just a term I used to say this was the uh, first investigation we've used it in. So, were the other cases just pretty standard cases then, not live investigations? They were training examples that came from actual investigations that those agencies gave permission for their case files and their data to be shared as a training example and to recreate their uh, examinations. So they weren't active investigations to the best of your knowledge? Correct. They were adjudicating. So this time that you used this, this technology was the first time to your knowledge that it was during a live investigation? Yes. So would it be fair to say that that's like the first time it's being used? In the city of Waukesha or in general? I'm not sure I'm understanding. Is it fair to say that this specific investigation was the first time that you've used it? Did, did I personally use the software or yes. that somebody has used it? You. 
this was the first time I personally used the software as our agency recently purchased it, and this was the first case we were able to use it on. And so, would it be fair to say that usually anyone's first time using new technology, there would be a learning curve? Would that be fair to say? Uh, I would I would say no. So you would say you came right into using this new technology the first time you've ever personally used it and knew exactly how to work it? I would say over my career, uh, especially with uh, conducting di digital forensic examinations, uh, I had over 1,500 hours of training in various aspects. I'm a certified trainer. I hold a um, certified forensic computer examiner certification through the International Association of Computer Investigative Specialists, along with other uh, certifications as well. I obtained multiple certifications from InputAce, the company that put on the training uh, for this process, for this device, for video analysis, and we tend to follow principles uh, throughout all the different disciplines, and the training's quite intensive, quite difficult, so over that time, uh, you develop the skills necessary to uh, be able to start using software, using your techniques to do these investigations right away. Awesome. You're stating some pretty uh, nice credentials there, but you, you also just said that there's some difficulty in the training. Would any of that difficulty lend towards the learning curve of working the software? In my opinion, for myself, no. So you you pretty much can come into new technology and just know exactly how to work it. You're just ready to go. Ground answer. Ground. Um, overruled. He may answer it. Uh, this particular, if we're talking strictly about video analysis, I attended a 40-hour class using the software input ACE along with uh, forensic video analysis at the National Computer Forensic Institute uh, run by the Secret Service in Alabama. And then I also uh, obtained uh, several certifications through input ACE themselves. So having approximately 80 hours of training uh, through the video software, um, this was not much of a learning curve as I had previously been using input a software for approximately two years. So this new technology was a variation of, well, let, let me back up a bit. What you're saying is this new technology was a variation of technology that you had already previously been using. Objection. This characterizes the evidence. Grounds. This is not new technology. Grounds. Uh, sustain this to the form of the question. Before using it, this technology in this live investigation, as you coined it, have you previously heard of this technology before using it in this live investigation? Yes. Any idea how long it may have been being used before you used it? Um, to my best knowledge, it's been around for uh, several years. We first started investigating it in approximately January. January of 2022? Yes. You are aware that this live investigation would have been a live investigation in November of 2021. Would that be fair to say? Yes. So it will also be fair to say that if your department didn't start using this technology until January of 2022, how were you able to use it in November of 2021? Uh, this was not conducted in November of 2021. Uh, once we learned about um, methods when we were trying to locate a more scientific way to do a speed analysis. I discovered this method, the training that the company put on. Uh, we had to obtain budgetary funds. It was approximately $4,000. Uh, then we had to schedule the training. The training was supposed to be earlier in the spring, and um, a couple of the instructors came down with COVID, so the classes got pushed back to summer. Um, we had been doing, they had provided me with all the online training videos so that I could go through, watch those. Um, start prepping myself as much as I could. And then the summer, we actually had the uh, class with the hands-on examples, and that's when they provided the certification. And after that is when we uh, actually went out and were able to do the speed analysis based on the videos that we had from November 21st. So the bulk of your uh, learning to work this technology was done via video? Video and uh, live instruction. And that live instruction was in the summer, as you stated, correct? They don't do it all in one segment, so it was completed um, 
with an instructor between, I believe, May and the beginning of August. So when did you, around what time did you do this analysis? I believe I performed the actual analysis somewhere around the middle of August. I can't remember the exact date. So pretty recent? Yes. Any idea why so long, considering that this matter has been going on for roughly a year? Objection, asked and answered. Grounds. The last three to five minutes. Grounds. Overruled. You may answer. We just wanted to make sure that we had all the proper equipment, the proper training, all the proper documentation, certifications for myself and the device before we went out and did the actual analysis. So your department thought it would be best to hold off on the analysis until you got everything in order? Yes, until we had the certifications to make sure they were valid. Would it be fair to say that that's a pretty lengthy amount of time to wait to do an analysis in a case that's a pretty big case? No, I would not say that. Have you ever had that sort of delay before in any other line of investigations? I can't recall specifically if there's been something that delayed our analysis of another piece of evidence, another investigation, but there is a delay to sometimes purchasing equipment for a new piece of technology or a new type of training. When we start talking about digital forensics, we're talking about tens of thousands of dollars for equipment and often anywhere between $3,000 to $6,000 for a week long of training for something particular. So there's a delay because of the financial part of the investigations? I'm not sure I'm getting it. Sometimes there can be. Any idea how that might apply to this line of investigation? I'm not sure I understand the question. How the financial part of the equipment and as you say, sometimes things can get expensive. Would that apply to this line of investigation or why the delay was so long? Objection. Grounds. Elements. Grounds. Overruled. You may answer. Yes, I believe in January again is when we first started looking at this. We had to obtain the funding, schedule the training, wait for the company to host the training and all those things before we were ready to proceed with it. Do you recall who you were referred to to do the analysis? As far as? As far as basically who taught you to do it. I'm quite sure you're not the only person that does what you does out of your department. Would that be fair to say? No, that would not be fair. I am currently right now the only one certified in forensic video analysis. So who taught you to be the video analysis for this particular case? I was the only one at our agency that would be able to perform that at this time. Who contacted your agency? Detective Casey. And who does Detective Casey work for from your knowledge? City of Waukesha Police Department. To the best of your knowledge, was Detective Casey made aware that it would be a long delay before the analysis can get completed? Yes, we had discussions about it. Was Detective Casey informed that it would be such a lengthy delay? Grounds. Overruled. You may answer. Not initially. Again, this was supposed to be done a lot earlier in the year. However, due to the limited number of classes they have scheduled, where they're scheduled, and the fact that COVID unfortunately canceled a couple of the classes, that did increase the delay, which I did have conversations with Detective Casey about, advising him that it would be a little bit longer. Were there any, I guess I would say, suggestions that maybe you could use a different technology that wouldn't have caused such a long delay? Not for video analysis, no. So what video analysis were you doing before this new technology that you just started using? This technology was specific to speed analysis. So there was no technology specific to speed analysis before this new technology? Not that I'm trained to know. So would there have been someone else tapped to do the analysis if it wasn't for this new method? 
I was concerned with video analysis, and I'm the only one at our agency that can conduct video analysis at this time, as far as um, other methods outside of digital forensics or forensic video analysis, I wouldn't have any uh, expertise or knowledge to speak on those. I'm, I'm a little confused, because do you do video and speed analysis, or one of the other? Because you just stated, and you, I think it would be fair to ask, did you, did you just not state that this was pertaining to speed analysis? Yes, I do video analysis for all types of cases, whatever is requested. Um, I am trained to measure speed from strictly video analysis. I'm not uh, trained to estimate uh, speed through other means of investigation. So how were you able to come up with an analysis of a speed in this investigation? Based on the technique that I described earlier in my testimony of um, using the 3D scanning software, overlaying the uh, video of the suspect vehicle traveling westbound on Main Street, plotting the points, and then measuring the distance over the time. Was there any other method? Well, let me back up. Was there any other technology that you could have utilized that same method without a delay? It's the same. You stated that you've done speed analysis numerous times. Would that be fair to say? In what regards? In, in in what to, to any cases before this one? In training examples, not in an investigation done by our agency. So it would be fair to say you yourself haven't done very many speed analysis. I can give you a firm number of how many we did in, in training over that time. Um, but no, I'll not, not we, you. I'm asking specific to you yourself. Outside of this current investigation, I have not currently performed any for any other agency yet, no. So would it be fair to say that maybe you could have been off on a few of your analysis, being that it was your first time doing it in a live investigation as you coined it? No, I would, I would not say that. Grounds. Hold on. What's the objection? Calls for speculation and argumentative. Grounds. That it grounds in that. Um, Mr. Brooks, what was your question again? Um, my question was that would it be fair to say that since he stated that this was his first time doing a speed analysis in a live investigation and he hadn't done pretty much haven't done it before, would it be fair to say that maybe he could have been off a little bit on his mis uh, on his calculations being that it was his first time? Um, overall, he may answer. I, I would say no to that. Um, with this, again, we're following the premise of uh, digital forensics. We It's a scientific process. We learn a technique. Um, we follow the process. We follow the standards. It's designed to be verifiable and repeatable, repeatable by anybody else that would have that training and um, that software performance. The files can be turned over to another person with equal training and they should be able to walk step by step and still come to the same conclusion. So I, I would say I'm confident in the speed that was obtained. So if someone else can come to the same conclusions that you came to, is it fair to say that someone else more a little more experienced could have been tapped to do the speed analysis instead of yourself we didn't have anybody more experienced in, in this area or our agency for this particular method is it possible that a, a different agency could have been tapped to do the speed analysis okay. I, this is outside of the witness grounds. personal knowledge grounds um, sustained us to the form of the question besides yourself do you know of anybody that can do this analysis and come to the same conclusions as yourself know of the company that provided the training other than that i do not know anybody personally in this area um, or other investigators to use this specific technique uh, would it be fair to say that you weren't the only one being trained through video and uh, the like sorry i don't understand the question um you you stated that you had to be trained in this form of doing the analysis you stated the classes were i think from somewhere from may to august you, you stated would that be fair to say yes 
What I'm asking is, were you the only person that was taking those classes? Uh, there were people from other countries, other states, um, wide ranges of uh, specialties, uh, paralegals, accident reconstructionists, um, forensic investigators, things of that nature. Anybody in Wisconsin that you know of? Not that I know of, no. From any other departments that you know of? Not that I'm aware of. So it would be fair to say that you, you're not sure? I don't know uh, who has exactly what piece of software in each location, but I have not heard of anybody else in this area having uh, the, the ability to do the speed analysis through video. So it would be fair to say you're not sure. Could, could you clarify one more time, please? I was I was pretty I was pretty direct. Mr. Brooks, as, as far he doesn't understand your question, that's why he's asking. Did you know of anyone else that was taking the same training? to operate the same equipment and technology that you were? Personally, no, if that's what you're asking. So it would be fair to say that you're not sure. I can say with confidence that nobody in the classes that I was um, enrolled in were from the state of Wisconsin. There were people from other countries, other states. That's um, really all I would know about that. I don't. And how did you come to that conclusion? The, typically during our classes we go through an introduction where we work, uh, where we're from, where we work, who we work for. So it was kind of like, uh, because you did state that they were kind of like video, so I'm assuming that would be online. Would that be fair to say? It was live online training, yes. So it would pretty much be like a, a, a classroom from an online setting. Objection. As an answer, then I would, uh, well, relevance. Grounds. It's been asked and answered, so sustain this question. About how long did it take when you started to do the analysis? How long did it take from the point that you started until completion? To put everything together, um, and great, it wasn't worked on all at the same time because we had to do the camera overlay, we had to go get the uh, readings from the uh, a variable frame light board and then start putting all that together. I would say hours wise, I would say probably some place between 20 and 24 hours to put it all together. So by roughly a day? Well, work days probably, probably about, probably three days or so. Would it be any reason why you, if you knew that you were being certified uh, for that analysis, would it be any reason why you wouldn't start getting things in place beforehand and to be ready to go as soon as you needed to be ready to go? I had the, the video, the surveillance videos that we were using from Bosco Social Club in place. I asked uh, Specialist Platt and Specialist Smith, Schmidt to assist with the 3D scanning prior to having the last certification in place so that everything was there and ready to go once I had that certification. So it would be fair to say that you had help in getting everything ready? With the 3D scan. Were you at any time trained in the 3D scanning? I am not currently trained in the operation of the Faro. That's why I requested um, Specialist Platt and Specialist Schmidt to perform that scan. Do you know if uh, those two specialists, I missed the name, so I don't want to butcher them, so I'm just not going to say them, but it would be fair to say it was two. With yes. Here. Were any of those two trained in the same speed analysis training as yourself? No, they are trained in forensic crime scene mapping using the 3D scanner, not uh, digital forensics or video analysis. Would it be fair to say that even though they're, they are not trained in the same area as yourself, that they were an essential key part to putting everything together? The 3D scanning software is an essential function to be able to perform uh, this particular analysis, yes. So it would, it would have been, it, it, it's fair to say it would have been a uh, a task if you would have had to do it by yourself. I I wouldn't be able to perform the analysis without the uh, 3D scanning. Did that in any way cause any delay? No. Do you recall about what date you started the analysis? I asked that answer. He may answer. I believe the 3D scanning took place on the early morning hours of, I want to say, August 10th. Um, when I had Specialist Platt and Schmidt to perform the 3D scan, they went back downtown uh, early in the morning to try and do it when there was as little vehicles as possible. 
uh, on the roadways so that it wouldn't interfere uh, with the actual um, diagram scan. I want to say the last certification was obtained somewhere right around August 16th, and then it was putting everything together afterwards. I'm sorry, did you state the last certification was obtained around August 16th? The, the last training class, yes. So at the time that you started, you weren't yet certified? I had not started anything as far as the speed analysis prior to that. Why would you be starting the prep for the analysis if you were not yet certified? Objection. Grounds. So stating this in the form of a question. You just stated that um, the preparations to do the analysis started around August 10th. Is that correct? The preparations by Specialist Plata and Specialist Schmidt as to the crime scene mapping uh, was done on August 10th. So when did you come into the fold to start doing your part of the uh, analysis? Uh, my part of the analysis originally began with just simply reviewing the video, um, uh, learning what video would be best, what frames I, I would want to use, which I obtained my training from the National Computer Forensic Institute in video analysis in April of 2021 and um, went back through the same training through Input Ace and was already certified through them, so I was already certified uh, for the video analysis portion of itself. The only thing I was waiting on was the um, materials necessary for the actual speed calculations. And when did you receive those uh, materials to, to do that part? The certifications I obtained on, I believe, right around August 16th. I can't remember if it was that so, day exactly, but... But it is fair to say that you had already started work before the date of August 16th. Objection, that's an answer. Sustained. So when did you actually start to do the analysis? What, what date was that? Grounds. Sustained. Do you know about the date that you completed your analysis? I believe it was somewhere around, somewhere around August 23rd, 22nd, 23rd. So it'd be fair to say roughly about a week or so? Roughly, yes. And do you recall when you um, actually turned in the analysis information? I, I believe it was around August 23rd, right around there. Uh, do you recall who you turned the analysis information into? I turned it into my supervisor, who then electronically forwarded it to the Waukesha County District Attorney's Office. Any idea how long it took for it to be viewed? No, I, I do not know. At the point that you started your part of the analysis, did you still need the help of the, the other two people from your department? No. So once you started, it was just yourself? Yes. And you, you were confident that you were fully trained, you wouldn't have any hiccups working this technology for the first time? Correct. You were pretty sure that you, you would get everything on point? Yes. No further questions. Thank you. Redirect. Thank you. The video in question from Bosco's Social Club was recorded during the Christmas parade on November 21st of 2021. Is that correct? Yes. You went to Bosco's in August to obtain that video, correct? Or I should say you obtained that video and then in August conducted your speed analysis with it, right? Yes. That's correct. August of 2022. That's fair. August 2022. I stand corrected. Uh, correct? Yes. Okay. If you were to clean slate, take that video file, start your calculations here today, would you come to the same conclusion in terms of miles per hour over those 26 frames? Yes. Objection hearsay. Overruled his answer my stand. The software that we're talking about is called Input Ace. Uh, correct. It started off Input Ace and I believe it was the earlier part of this year, Axon. Um, they also make uh, tasers, body cameras, things like that. They purchased the company now. It's called, uh, the software is called Axon Investigate. Uh, at the start of this, it was called Input Ace. You're certified to conduct speed analysis using that software? Yes. This case is not the first time that you use that software, is that correct? Correct. Uh, Overruled. 
You've asked him questions about that, so he gets to redirect. You may answer. Correct. You you use the software to conduct speed analysis on prior occasions, right? Yes. As part of your training? Yes. Your training involves using the Faro 3D scanning tool, correct? Well, mm, no, it, it, that was not state. Oh, state. hasn't provided the oh, answer. Sorry. So rephrase your question, please. Sure. <coughs> During your training to use the input ACE software, did you follow the same procedure in terms of using the Faro 3D scanning? Yes, yes. Yes, the, Go ahead. the procedures were the same, however, during training examples uh, throughout the country, there's there's different 3D crime scene scanners out there, uh, Trimble, Leica, Faro, Total. They used various different ones during the training examples of what what they had set up. The software worked similar, the methods were the same, regardless of which 3D scanner you use. Okay. And as a result of that training and the multiple times that you used the software to conduct speed analysis, you obtained a certification, correct? Yes. Okay. Um, are you the first person to testify about speed analysis using the input ACE software in any court in this country? No. Okay. Overruled. His answer may stand. So when reference was made during cross-examination about this being new, air quotes, software or new technology, is that an accurate uh, description of the technology? No. Jason, I was referring it to it being new to him. Strictly to objections noted. His answer may stand. Next question, please. Is this off uh, this technology, the software program input ACE, uh, used exclusively by law enforcement? No, it's not. Who else uses it? Um, accident reconstructionists, insurance companies, uh, defense attorneys, law enforcement. Uh, it's, it's available to anybody that uh, that provides payment, goes through the training, uh, things of that nature. That's all I have. Thank you. All right, thank you. You may step down. All right, this will be a good opportunity for an afternoon break. I'm going to keep it a little bit shorter, hopefully about 10 minutes uh, for the jury and the parties. All rise. Before we take our break, I just want to discuss a little bit of timing since it's a little after 3.30 um, and how long the state believes the next witness will take. The next witness is Deborah Ramirez. She is going to take about 10 minutes on direct. I'd like to wrap up today um, very close to 4.30. Um, and so if we can keep that in mind. And then I also need to address one other thing, and that is the clerk's office has made arrangements for a Spanish interpreter for tomorrow from 12 p.m. to 3.30 p.m. And so I need to know from the state whether they will be utilizing the interpreter. Well, Your Honor, we can call witnesses out of order. It, it's, we're behind. I'll be very honest. Today has gone much slower than we anticipated on cross-examination. So, um, but I understand the arrangements have been made, so we can shift things a little bit and uh, and try and accommodate that schedule by the interpreter. Do you believe you can also have the witness that Mr. Brooks identified needing an interpreter? Uh, let me check on that during the break, Your Honor. Thank you. I would appreciate that because then I would like to utilize the interpreter. The only other request, since we were only able to secure one interpreter, would be to put um, to have a different witness in between the two, uh, so that the interpreter has an appropriate break. Okay, understood. Um, and then, of course, it will also require us to be mindful of when we take um, the lunch hour, since the interpreter is available from twelve until three thirty. So okay. 12 we may need to take our lunch maybe at 1130 um, and I'm okay if we start a little bit later than the noon, but that should give us enough time. Any questions about that, Mr. Brooks? Uh, again, you know, I'm going to say I don't consent to that name, but no, no question. What is your name? Brooks. Uh, 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 Brooks. U
back. All right, we are officially back on the record. Then appearances are as they were before. We'll br bring the jury out, and then the state may call its next witness. So go ahead. The jurisdiction, Your Honor. Perfect time. The request to address it is denied. Is that a judicial determination, Your Honor? It's denied. Is that a judicial? I'm not going to address it right now. I've addressed it previously. There's no new information. Denied. Is it a judicial determination you're making, Your Honor? The record speaks for itself. Can it be filed in a motion? I don't understand the question. Can I file the motion that I've been raising? I'm not going to answer that, sir. I'm not going to direct you to file something or not file something. The jury's coming out. Is that a judicial determination, Your Honor? All right. It's a tacit agreement. It's a tacit agreement. All right. Thank you, everyone. Please be seated. Statement called its next witness. Thank you. The state calls Deborah Ramirez. I do. Thank you. Please be seated. First thing I will ask you to do is to state your first and last names for the record and then spell each. Deborah Ramirez, D-E-B-O-R-A, last name R-A-M-I-R-E-Z. Thank you. Go ahead, your witness. Thank you. Ms. Ramirez, where do you live? What city? Waukesha. Okay. Are you familiar with the annual Waukesha Christmas Parade? Yes, we go every year. Okay. So were you there last year, November 21st of 2021? I was. Who were you there with? My boyfriend, our four kids, and my dad. Okay. Was one of those kids a 12-year-old? Yes. What is that child's name? Isaac. And what's his last name? Foglia Ramirez. Do you remember where you and your family were seated during the parade? I can't remember the exact street name. We were across the street from Chef Pam's Kitchen. Do you know if you were on Main Street? Yes. Do you remember anything significant or out of the ordinary happening while you were watching the parade? At one point during the parade while we were watching, I remember my boyfriend suddenly screaming, whoa, 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 whoa. And then when he screams, I looked to my right, and that's when I saw a red vehicle coming right towards us. You previously said that you were across the street from Chef Pam's? Yes. So you would have been on the south side of the street? Yeah. Okay. Do you remember what the vehicle that was speeding towards you looked like? Speeding. Sustain this to the form of the question. Please rephrase. Okay. My mistake. I thought that that's what you said. Ms. Ramirez, do you remember what the vehicle looked like as it approached you and your family? It was a red SUV. That's all I remember. What happened as it got closer? I froze as it was coming closer. By the time that I finally tried to move, it was already right at us, and I was hit on my left foot, left leg. What area of your left foot and left leg? It was on top of my left foot. The tire went over my foot. Where were you positioned in relation to Isaac? I was standing to the right of Isaac. Okay. Did you notice whether or not Isaac was hit? I did not until I didn't know he was hit until after it happened that he said, Mom, my leg hurts. Isaac was standing next to you, you said? Yes. And the car ran over, the 
vehicle ran over your left foot. Yes. When you say next to you, do you mean Isaac was immediately to your side or in front of you or behind you or some other description? He was to my left standing um, just probably about a few inches ahead of me. Okay. What happened after the vehicle ran over your foot? I fell to the ground and um, I was kind of disoriented at first. All I remember was hearing the vehicle um, speeding past speeding past us um, towards other people. And looking all around me, I just remember seeing um, a lot of people on the ground as I was looking around to see if my kids were okay. While you were on the ground, could you hear the sound of the vehicle engine? I, um, the objections noted, it's overruled, you may answer. I remember, um, I remember hearing the, um, the vehicle as it was, um, I don't remember hearing the, the vehicle um, hitting the brakes. I remember listening, like hearing like accelerate instead of, instead of stopping. Did you uh, seek medical treatment after the parade? I seeked a medical treatment the next day. Where did you go? I went to urgent care in Pewaukee. What injuries did you sustain as a result of the vehicle striking your foot? I had a um, hematoma on my left uh, big toe, and um, I had my um, my ankle was sprained. The um, I went to see an orthopedic doctor, who said that um, there was tissue damage. Did you bring your son Isaac to seek medical treatment at any point after the parade? I did, also the next day with me. Same location? Yes. What injuries did Isaac sustain as a result of this incident? Sprain on his left leg. I would like to project for the witness only, the jury as well, Exhibit 36, which has previously been published. Does this depict you and Isaac before, during, or after you were struck? Before. Is this an accurate depiction of how you looked that day? Yes. Isaac as well? Yes. Move exhibit 43 into evidence and ask to publish. Objection. Where, where, are, where are they in the video? Um, your objection is noted. The exhibit number 43 is received. Permission to publish is granted. Okay, just so we know what we're looking at, the screen in front of you is a touch screen. Can you use your finger and circle Isaac for us? Yes. And that's the green jacket you described? Yes. Okay. And on the which side of the screen? On the middle left. Okay. Can you circle yourself now, if you see it? And that's the pink jacket you described? Yep. Yeah. Right next to Isaac? Yes. All right. We can clear that, please. Can we show the witness only, please? Uh, exhibit number 45. Do you see the picture? There? I do. Okay. And uh, what does this depict? It looks like a picture of after getting struck by the vehicle. Do you see either yourself or Isaac in this photo? I see both. And is this an accurate picture of how you looked after the vehicle struck you? Yes. Move exhibit 45 into evidence and ask to publish. Can't really see. Your objection is noted. It's overruled. Exhibit 45 is received. Permission to publish is granted. You see the, fit the photograph in front of you? Yes. Are you in that photograph? I am. What does this show? <laughs> that shows me getting up afterwards, after the incident. Uh, is this an accurate screenshot of how you looked after the SUV came through? Yes. Move exhibit 40 into evidence and ask to publish. Exhibit 40 is received, permission to publish is granted, similar to one of the prior uh, exhibits. You'll notice there are some comments on the right-hand side. The jury is instructed to disregard those. 
uh, when considering this exhibit. Thank you. Could we zoom in on the middle of this, please? Once again, Mr. Ramirez, if you see yourself, could you please circle up you yourself for us? Thank you. And do you see Isaac in this screenshot? I don't. Okay. Uh, we can clear that and zoom back out. Thank you. Thank you. Because you just saved it. We'll take that up outside the presence of the jury. Don't let me forget. All, All right. right. Then uh, go ahead if you have any cross for this witness. Um, you stated that you went to the urgent care in Pewaukee the next day. Would that be fair to say? Yes, it is. Um, what caused the day delay? As I was um, trying to find my other child who was at the parade but not with, like right with me, among all the um, other people that were injured, I was able to see how much, how many people were on the ground needing immediate help, how much blood was on the ground at that time that I chose to wait until the next day since um, I knew I was hurt but I did not need immediate attention as other people did. So you had went home for the evening and decided to just go to urgent care the next day? Yes. So from your recollection, you weren't in need of immediate medical attention? I was in need of medical attention, but not immediately. Any reason why you didn't take uh, your son to seek immediate attention? He was able to, um, he was able to walk out of there with me. He was limping, but he was able to walk out of there with me. So that's why we decided to wait until the next day. Do you recall giving an interview with a detective agent? I remember giving an um, interview. I don't recall his name. Do you recall the date that you gave the interview? I can't remember. Was it a few days after the incident, a week or? It was a few days after. I cannot remember the exact date. Any idea why it took a few days to make a report? We were, um, we were in touch right away. It just took a few days for us to set up the interview. Did you uh, seek to make a report the evening of the incident? No. Any reason why? I was in shock. So at the time you didn't you didn't feel like you needed to make a report immediately? Would that be fair to say? As I said before, I was in shock. I um, I got home with a um, basically mental breakdown. So I was crying when I got home. I did not think of anything else. Uh, you stated that your uh, boyfriend was uh, with you that, that evening. Would that be fair to say? Yes. Um, do you know if he was injured in any way? He was not. You stated that you heard him saying, whoa, whoa, whoa. Do you know where he went from that moment? He proceeded to move move backwards to um, not get hurt. In the videos that you saw, did you, did you see him in the video anywhere? I can't remember. So it'd be fair to say that you couldn't see him in the videos that you just saw like two, three minutes ago. I could see myself and Isaac. I remember what we were wearing. I cannot remember what he was wearing. Any reason why you remember what you and your son was wearing, but not your boyfriend who was present with you at the incident? Because I'm the one that dresses myself and my child. I don't know what he wears at that time, at any time. Do you remember seeing him after the, directly after the incident? I do. Did he leave with you when you left to go home? He did, yes. <clears throat> and you were also there with um, other children yes. of yours, correct? Yes. Were any of those children hurt in the incident? 
just um, scrapes from uh, moving out of the way, but not hurt by the vehicle. So they weren't struck by the vehicle to your knowledge? They were not. Do you recall where they were when the vehicle passed you? Where they were exactly when the vehicle passed. Um, I know that they were to the right of me. I, um, I believe they were behind me at the time. Do you know about how far approximately from you they were? I do not. Do you remember uh, if you were next to a, a intersection or a cross street? To the left, to the left of me, um, there was an inter intersection. I was not directly at the intersection, as there were more people to the left of me. Do you remember what intersection that was? As I have stated before, um, I can't remember exactly which intersection it was. I just remember being across the street from um, Chef Pam's kitchen. Um, do we have Exhibit 15, I believe it is? Yeah. Can you pull that up for this? Permission granted. Can you make out uh, your names on that screen? Yes. Can you see the black line pointing to a star? I can. Where would you estimate that is? That looks like it's on um, Main Street and Broadway. So it's, it would be fair to say that that cross street was in fact Broadway? Yes. Can the record reflect that the cross street of Broadway is identified? Okay. The record will still reflect. Do you see the red line right there under the star inside of the uh, police badge emblem? Yes. Do you know what that red line indicates? I do not. Do you know if there was a barrier at that intersection? I remember seeing barriers. I cannot recall if there was one at that intersection. Do you recall where you, where you saw the barriers at? I don't recall. Did you see the, the barriers anywhere in your vicinity, in your immediate vicinity where you were stationed at? Like I said, I can't remember. Do you recall what you were, oh, let me back up. Do you recall seeing the vehicle approach? I do. Uh, did the vehicle strike that? Were you able to estimate how fast the vehicle was traveling at that point when it was approaching? I wouldn't know how fast it was traveling. Did you make <coughs> the make and model of the vehicle that was approaching? All I remember is there was a red SUV. I can't remember what I what the I wasn't able to see what the make and model was. Did you see the driver? I did not. Were there any tents to the vehicle that, that you recall? I can't remember. Did you catch the license plate number? So I did not. Did you observe the vehicle strike anyone before it got to you? Yes, I did. After it passed you? Before it passed me. After it passed you? Why don't you ask the question more fully so it's clear? Did you observe the, the vehicle strike anyone once it passed you? I did not. Do you recall your boyfriend taking a, a video of the incident? Yes, I do. Have you seen that video? Um, yes, I have. Was that video uh, given to any law enforcement that you recall? It was not. Any reason why? Because when the vehicle came towards us, it um, was moving way too much because of him moving back and it was too blurry to see anything. So it would be fair to say the video was pretty much disregarded at that point? Yes. Any reason why it would be disregarded? You could hear the screaming, but as I said, you could not see anything. So it was disregarded. It's fair to say it was disregarded because the video, in fact, could, could not, you couldn't see anything from the video? Yes. And when you and your son were treated for your injuries at Urgent Care in Pewaukee, about how long did the treatment last before you were discharged? We were there for at least an hour. And why so briefly? Grounds. Argumentative. 
Sustainable. Were you given any uh, pain medication during it, during your treatment? Objection relevance. Grounds. Um, overruled. She may answer. I was not. Do you know if uh, your, your son was given any pain medication at that time? No, he was not. Do you recall it being uh, pretty loud out there that, that evening? Yes, I do. Uh, pretty windy, pretty cold? I can't remember. It'd be fair to say it was chilly enough to wear a, a jacket or a coat. Would that be fair to say? Yes. Would it be fair to say that maybe it was a little it was windy enough to wear a, a winter cap? Yes. Do you recall if you were wearing a winter cap? I do. And would, do you recall if you had it pulled low, possibly over your ears? No. You don't recall? I, I'm sorry, I didn't know what the no was to, that's why. Um, I was wearing a, um, I was wearing a headband. I was not wearing a, um, a cap. It'd be fair to just say that you just said you was wearing a cap. No, you asked if I recalled if I was wearing one. I said, yes, I recall. That you were wearing a cap. I recall if I was, and it was a winter headband. I might, I might've been, I might've been confused. I apologize. The next question, please. I don't consent to that name, Your Honor, for the record. What is your name? Bruce. Do you recall if anyone else she was with was wearing a, a winter cap? I don't recall. After your initial uh, treatment at uh, Urgent Care in Pewaukee, did you receive any more treatment after that? Yes, I did. Did your son? receive any more treatment after that? She did not. No further questions. Me redirect. On cross-examination, you testified that you saw other people get struck before the SUV got to you and your family, right? Yes. What group in the parade was in front of you at the moment that the SUV got to your family? Extreme dance. Did you see those girls get hit? I did. Did you see the aftermath after the SUV went through the, that area? Yes, I did. Based on what you saw with those girls getting hit, if you and Isaac had been standing 18 inches to the north, do you think you would have delayed until the next day to seek medical treatment? Jackson, that's sub subjective. Okay. I don't have anything else for this witness. Thank you. All right. Thank you. You may step down. All right, we will at least stop with testimony for the day. With that, you are excused for the day. We'll see you tomorrow morning. All rise for the jury, please. All right, thank you. Please be seated. All right, Mr. Brooks, I cut you off because I wanted you to raise whatever the issue was outside the presence of the jury. I don't know if you had a question or an objection or a comment, but go ahead. Uh. I forgot what you, I forgot what part you cut me off on. Well, it had to do with the, uh, one of the exhibits, and it's the second time it's happened where I've, dis I've told the jury to disregard comments that are visible on the exhibit. Yeah, um, is it a way that that, I mean, because it's, it was, that was the one that was the steel frame, right? Correct. We've seen it before on the video. Can I cut that part out so that way it just make it easier? So at this point, um, the exhibits have been received. I've told them to disregard it. What, what may happen is ultimately when they're deliberating, they may ask to see exhibits. And if that happens, uh, then I'll have to make a determination about whether those exhibits are given to the jurors. There might be copies that are there um, or shown if, if that's uh, the type of exhibit we're talking about. And then we'll go from there. So it's a little bit premature, but... Um, I hope that answers your question. I, I do believe you were you were more than clear when you told them to disregard it. So you, that part was definitely clear. And the the worry would be if they were shown that in deliberations. We'll who, cross that bridge if and when it becomes an issue. Yeah, I, I just don't want it to. I understand. 
Just for the record, we're talking about Exhibit 40. That's the exhibit that Mr. Briggs, excuse me, the defendant subjected to, and that we put on a pause until the jury was out of the room. Was Exhibit 40 where I instructed the jury to disregard the comments on the right? I have a note. I'll have to look back through my notes on this happened another time, and it may have been maybe the same. I think it's the video that the screenshot came from. Exactly. All right. Then, does the state have any information for me about the witness and whether you'll need the interpreter for tomorrow? No, we do not believe we will need the interpreter for any of the state's witnesses, Your Honor. We did secure David Marquez, I'm sorry, Juan Marquez to be here at noon so that as soon as we start from the afternoon break, we could take his testimony out of order. All right. Mr. Brooks, do you understand that? No. Well, let me advise you, sir, that since there's the need for an interpreter and this court had been going through making, not myself, but the clerk's office to make arrangements as it relates to this interpreter, I'm going to have you call that witness. It will be out of order. That's not unusual. That happens sometimes. But we at least have that witness available starting at noon. If all goes well, we'll take an early lunch about 1130. We'll take an hour, and then we'll put Mr. Marquez on at 1230. You'll do the initial questioning. The state will then do the cross, okay? Did you hear me advise you of that? I'm informed. All right. And then the other thing I just want to put on the record today is that, again, Mr. Brooks does not have the headphones on. I did not notice any apparent difficulties with your hearing. I wanted to also make a record that, especially as it relates to the cross-examination of Detective Carpenter, which I would describe as a technical expert witness, there was some very articulate, clear, cogent, and salient questions were asked by Mr. Brooks, especially regarding when the technology was obtained. He questioned him about such topics as it was a live case and what that meant, the reliability of the software, the equipment, even the financial issues, not issues, but just how it was obtained, his training, his experience, asking questions regarding did he provide, for example, speed analysis for any other cases and things of that nature. You're certainly questioning other witnesses about whether they've watched videos previously that would go to their credibility, which is ultimately a jury determination. But I just wanted to put that on the record and commend you for that. Any other issues from either party today from you, sir? We still got the issue about the 13th subpoena. So my understanding is you filled it out, or do you need to fill it out? It's been filled out. I just wanted to know. I didn't know when it was going to be addressed. My understanding, and let me confer with the state, did the subpoena get turned over to the state, the 13th subpoena? I don't believe it has, no. It's the witness is the one who the state previously advised us was lived out of state. That's the person we're talking about, correct? And that's the issue. So the state's not obligated. I'm just going to cut to the chase. The state's not obligated to make any kind of travel arrangements or otherwise serve the subpoena on someone who's out of state. There's procedures in the statutes. I'm not going to lay those out for you. This is one of those things. I'd refer you back to when we went through the waiver of right to attorney form and about how the court can't explain procedure or the law that you're put in the same position as an attorney who's been practicing here in the state of Wisconsin. I am not going to require the state to make arrangements for an out of state witness. That falls on you. I have to be licensed to be held to the same standard as a licensed attorney. I don't want to get into that because I don't want you to think I'm trying to argue. I disagree with your legal assessment, sir. 
So Hello. your objections noted for the record. Um, um, but you're a party to this case, sir, and parties I, that are self-represented can do things uh, that attorneys can do. A party doesn't need an attorney, for example, to secure a subpoena. So with that, I believe that addresses the 13th subpoena. Um, any other issues? Uh, I, I intended to have 13 witnesses. So if I'm not obviously not able to call the 13th witness, how do I get my 13th witness? I can't answer that, sir. Would I still be able to have a 13th witness? You have to name the person that you date was on Monday. I, so I, who would be your 13th witness then, sir? I would have to look on my original witness list to get the 13th witness. I know that was my target was 13. Well, I'll tell you what, I'll let you look through that tonight and you can advise us in the morning and if the state wants to object, they can advise me then. But you're gonna have to fill out another subpoena then. That, that's fair. And that's fair. I can't promise that they'll be able to do that, but we'll see what they have to say tomorrow morning. Yeah, I do want to state also for the record, why I'm able to hear you very well is because I'm actually in the courtroom with you, which I have been the last few days, which is breath of fresh air. I would um, agree with that assessment, sir. That's why I'm able to, to hear much more clearly. All right. Thank you for making that record. I appreciate it. Any other issues uh, from the state? Nothing, Judge. Thank you. All right. We'll see everyone then tomorrow morning at 830. We are in recess for the day.